Yo, what is up guys and welcome to my first video that is in the format of a full educational on the rank 2 masters and I'm starting it off with Riven. We'll have full educational Riven games across all elo brackets growing from silver all the way to masters where I play the games and I try to be as educational as I can, let you guys know all my thought process so you guys can learn from it and ultimately apply it to your own games. Now I highly recommend that you start off with watching the videos around the elo bracket that you're currently at and also progress maybe one to two tiers depending on what your goals are for this season and how far you want to climb so you see how the game progresses. This was a very big project and my goal is to try and do this for every top lane champion going over the next course of year of doing content creation. So right now we're doing Riven, my next champion will be Aatrox and I want to try and do this for every top lane champion so I can help everybody out. If you like this format please let me know down in the comments and please consider leaving a subscription as it helps me out a lot and I will see you guys into the video. Let's go! Every move you made, I was watching you. If you are serious about improving and climbing to your desired league rank, you're in the right place. This year I've worked on laying out two courses that will help you in all aspects to improve. One is about all the fundamentals for the laning phase and the other one goes in depth on tempo and the mid to late. I've been challenger for 7 years and I can guarantee you that this will massively speed up your process and reaching any goal that you have set in mind. Both courses have a preview video where you can see the style of the videos, so check those out before anything. You can also always join my Discord to check out some reviews. Alright, let's get into the video. Alright guys, let's get into the first game here. Now, for the first game we instantly get one of the hardest matchups, arguably the hardest matchup for Riven, which is going to be Riven into Reddington. Now, the setup that you should be running in terms of rune into a champion like Rennington goes as this. So, you know, the normal setup that I run on right now is going to be Transcendence and Nimbus Cloak because whenever you hit Ignite, you gain burst movement speed towards your opponent and it's very beneficial for us, right? However, into the super tricky matchups, especially for the early game, so this could be Jax, Fiora, Set, uh, Rennington types of champions, I like to take this and I'll also take Unflinching. And Unflinching is very good because you gain tenacity against his stuns, especially the lower HP you are. Um, we could argue that we could maybe run Tenacity here as well, but I really like Alacrity for my fast combo, so let's see what we end up taking here. I get a Nocturne Jungle, which is a pretty strong early game jungler, so that is nice. Uh, however, we are 80 jungle and 80 top, so the Rennington could be buying Tabis, and that's going to be pretty hard to kill him. There's also a Jax. So they could be actually picking the Rennington into the Cassidy mid, and then I'm playing against the Jax top. Against both matchups, I am able to... Oh... Okay, no, it's at least not okay. Uh, never mind. Of course, they have the Aphelios mid, or what I mean, Aphelios mid, the Aurelian soul mid. Okay, so Lee Sin Jungle ranked in top. Uh, this is a game where I am considering going Gore Drinker and Death Stance. And the biggest reason as to that as well is because they have Burst here and Burst here. And if I go Hydra, the Rangton can just always one-shot me, right? And another benefit I get when I go for the Gore Drinker is that I have a lot of HP. And it also opens up the Death Stance uh, because more resistance is also um, easier to get more HP that way, right? Because if I have more HP and more resistance, they kind of stack each other and complement each other. So that is very good. And um, I see the Rankton is playing PTA Resolve Flash Ignite as well. So he's also running a relatively aggressive setup. Uh, I've got to keep that in mind because an aggressive setup can be tricky to play against. Now, this matchup, how it goes, I win level 1 actually because he only has Q Auto or W, right? A W Auto deck, but, or Auto W rather. But I have Q Auto, Q Auto, Q Auto. And I have Bone Plating. So what we want to try and do is balance around the Bone Plating and then try and see if I can get as many trades off at the level 1. We can go two starting items here. We could go for D-Blade Potion or we go for Longsword 3. I like Longsword 3. It gets me a little bit faster towards my Gore Drinker if I don't need like a, a D-Blade on my first base. Plus also it makes it so I can look to trade a little bit more in the early game. And why is Draven looking like Galio? What's up with that? As always, chat, and like this is so important for everybody to do, always try and get the war done in the early game. The biggest advice I can give you when learning to pick up Riven or any top lane champion is just to scout the first four waves. So, what are we scouting here? Rankton against Riven, I actually have the winning level 1, they have Lee Sin against Nocturne. Both jungles are pretty strong in the early game. So what I want to do is know how both jungles are pathing in the early game, so I know if I should look for a second wave crash, a third wave crash, or fourth wave crash. So, how I do that on Riven, and also remember, in games such as level 1, I'm going to be pathing like this. And I'll full you lit, like this. Okay, I see a lot of people here, so that even is going to allow me to get a little bit of a deeper ward. So normally I just hop over here and I ward here. Ooh, I have three passive stacks, I win. He has no bone plating. He has W. When ignite, I should win. Okay, he turned around. I'm dead here as well, but I'll take it. I'll take it. 
We got Flash Recurse Ignite. We didn't end up getting our ward, but now this already makes the matchup 10 times easier. I'm gonna go for Longsword. In my opinion, it makes no sense to buy a Ruby Crystal here, and the biggest reason as to why is it's not gonna make me any stronger in the early laning phase here. One very important thing to recognize here as well is my experience. If you get a solo kill without anybody else getting an assist in the early game, I will actually get my level 2 from the first five no yes five minutes i need three melees and two castles and then i should get my level two so i'm going to try and play for that because remember this guy does not have bone plating and he has no summoners right now plus i have double long sword so again the game starts at level one jet and i can't count how many times i get kills just jumping over here either finding the jungler finding enemy top laner and this is a prime example no says to not push top i will be pushing top and the reason i will be pushing top is because i get my level two first so i want to try and hide my level up timer by not making it known to Rennington, right? And I want to keep my cooldowns up as well so that when I hit the level 2, the Rennington won't expect it. So now I'm gonna Q forward, auto this, get my level 2, W, auto, boom. I am gonna keep trading here. I have 3 points he only has 1. So now I get half his HP and I will do a second wave crash. And what happens after I do a second wave crash is the wave will start bouncing back into me. But that is beneficial because my Nocturne is passing to top. And this also gives me a timer to look for a ward on Lee Sins. Jungle Clear, he uses one potion. Okay. So I could ward on Golems or I could ward on Red Buff. I would say the ward on Red Buff here is more beneficial. Because I know for sure. Okay, so Lee Sin is passing at the top and Nocturne is passing at the top. I'm making sure so people know. And I'm expecting Lee Sin to be maybe here right now. Because Nocturne is also here on his third camp, right? Or his fourth camp, rather. Okay. Two means for level 3 right here, chat. He's already level 3, so I gotta be a little careful. I get my level 3 as well though. Now, the reason why I like this trade so much is because I still have 2 potions, but Reddington has 0. So because of this, it's actually very beneficial for me to look for these equal health traits. Okay, this see is here. I was showing him. If he goes for the cannon, I can maybe kill him. And okay, perfect. Now my job is to hard push this wave as fast as possible. I want to hard push this wave before this next minion wave arrives. So here, I was able to trade because I had the potion advantage. Also, I had a really good position right, but having the extra items, so... The fights are just pretty easy. The combo I use there is E. I think I use Q, E, Q, W, and Auto Q, right? And then it just died. Very nice. Uh, 1k gold is a little bit of a tricky purchase here. So my options will be D Blade and another long short, but then I go for Hydra. So instead, I'm just going to buy a pickaxe here. I'm going to sell this and get refillable. And. The awkward part is here, this extra long shot, right? This is kind of the, ex uh, the awkward part here. Um, you want to build HP in matchups like this, mostly so that I can stat check him. As you can see right now on items, I'm super far ahead on the Reddington in terms of uh, damage, right? I have 127 and he only has 104. But the main issue that I have, of course, is that I have no HP. I'm still playing on my base HP. So that is why I want the D-Blade right now. But alternatively, I can also get this Ruby Crystal or this Ruby Crystal, right? You don't want to finish a full Kindle Gem. You usually just want to get the Ruby Crystal or the Phage because it gives damage. And you want damage on the champion. Like, all right, he just hit level 4. Okay, I'm going to try and make... Okay, he hit the mean. That's pretty good for me. Okay, so right now what I'm going to do is he has no E, he has no W. I want to wait for my E to come back. And then I want to just full trade into him. He should be dead. Because he has no E. And my Ignite is back. Nice. Okay, so next check, whenever we get a kill, check where next wave is at. Alright, it is right here. So now what I want to do is allow this wave to walk through the lane. It is walking through the lane as is. And now I can hard push this as fast as possible and look to <laughs> look to reset again. Beautiful. So here, literally the first waves were already super free for me. Why? I played to watch my level up timers. And then the second thing is I had the first blood right. And again, as I always say, chat. The game starts at level 1, you get a kill in the early game like that, it will completely, completely snowball your landing phase. Lee Sin died bot on 24 CS, and remember, he pathed to top, so he's gonna go to bot side again, because if a jungler starts in bot side and they path into top, then next thing is going to go into bot again. I'm gonna get my level 6 here. <gasps> okay, I played it well with my level up, but I messed up that combo. His combos are in a bit longer cooldown than mine, though. I should, I could kill the Lee Sin as well by auto Q auto, Q auto, and W. Nice. I still have my ult. I get my Conqueror stack super fast there. That's why I still win. Also, he's only level 3, so I win because of that as well. Okay, a little bit of mechanics there. Now, the thing is, the mechanics are a little bit harder to copy, right? That is going to make sense. My mechanics on them are very good. I have, I think, in total 5 million driven points. But the way I play with my waves, the way I'm making my plans, right? Always slow pushing into hard push. Know my level timers exactly. 
Lissin should have been bot there, but he actually went to top, which surprised me, but I suppose he was looking for the golems. Uh, I did see that he was level 3, I was level 6, so I feel a lot stronger, but I didn't do a hard combo there, I did Q auto, Q auto, Q auto. A lot of people can do that, right? So, there we go. Now we're gonna go for the Gore Drinker first, as I said, because burst and burst, and it also will allow us to go Death Stance. But before we go Death Stance, we probably go Cleaver second, because one of the issues we, that you have when you go for Gore Drinker is that you have no armor penetration, right? Um... Revan has no armor penetration. Okay, it's 28 farm now, so he's taken one more camp, and now he's on golem, so I'm not sure. He has no more topside camps left. I'm pretty certain of that. This plate is not really below half HP yet. Notion is bot. Yeah, so I'm thinking Lee Sin might want to look for the Scuttle here, right? So I'm gonna be standing here, waiting for him to face check, and then we go. Alright, I mean, it, it is all jungle tracking and it's all fundamentals, as always, chat, as always. Now, the combo there was Kyoto, Kyoto, W or E, Auto, W, Kyoto. Alright, let's get this as well. The reason I can take this is because Renek is pushing the wave towards me, so I'm not really losing anything in this process. Now, he only is a phage and I'm already close to my full board drinker. So, from here on out, my biggest job is to never die. If I never die, I can never lose my lead and they can never catch back up. Okay, so Renek is 6. I gotta be a little careful, I don't wanna fight him because he has 6 and I don't. Oh. Okay. I mean, it doesn't do too much damage, but I'm still just going to run away. As long as I never die, it should be very hard for enemy team to ever get back in the game. 30 for my ult, 30 for my ignite, then I want to fight. I'm just going to pop both of my potions. I'm going to EQ to get the phage healing. If I can bait his cooldowns right here, like him in forward, he's dead. I'm going to try and bait him here. I'm oh. Oh, I used it. EW. I'm waiting for it to flash, then I flash as well. Auto, auto. Okay, sorry, I'll flash Q auto. So the most important thing there is waiting for him to flash so that my Q will still do damage. If I Q first and he flashes out of my Q range, I will not have enough damage, right? And keep in mind, I'm not playing with Nimbus, so I don't get extra movement speed. Now the Raiden is dead, no TP. I'm assuming this is bot side. Their bot is mid, however. But we should be able to take two plates, so Raiden has just respawned. Lucian's 2p around both sides. Okay, I get two plates, and I have enough time to push this as well before the Rankton gets back. It will give me extra tempo over the Rankton, and now the game should be in an absolutely wonderful position. I'm gonna leave my ward. Oh, you're still level 4. He's only taken one camp. What are you doing, Lucian? You should be farming. You don't wanna fight me. Alright, so we go for the Gore Drink here, but because we're so far ahead, I'm also going to be buying CDR boots, and I'll explain why. So when you have. 50 haste is the best to have, but right now we only have 40 haste, but I can still still show you what I mean. So you see my Q has a 9 second cooldown, but the way it works is whenever I press Q, now the cooldown is already running. So if I let it run out all the way and then the Q again, right, and then at the end, look, I do my Q again, it is only on a 2 second cooldown. If you make it so you have 50 ability haste, so only 10 more haste, then you would actually instantly get your Q back. So here what I want to do, and this is called Q delay, is I want to full Q delay and an E3 on top of my opponent. I'll make sense. So here I'm going to start Q delaying. Right, I'm going to try and bait him to walk up into me. And then I want to realistically E, Q3 into him, then stack my Conqueror and then fight him. That is the best way that I can look to play towards my opponent. So I'm going to be permanently Q delaying right now because this is where most of your kills come from. So now I, oh, I wanted to Q3 into him, I didn't get it. So I'm going to Q delay again, right? I'm permanently going to Q delay. I'm going to hide it by walking in the bushes. Oh, I let it run out. I'm lucky. One more time. Start my Q delay. This is how you want to play into most matchups. Q delay again. And now if he walks up, I will E, Q3, and he thinks he has no Q. I, he thinks I have no Q now, right? So now I have eight or six Conqueror stacks, and now I get my Q back. Okay, it's, it ends up not being the, the prettiest trade, but the point still stands. The point still stands, but not the prettiest trade. Okay, let's E, Gore, drink a Q, and I bet it is old. I have six Conqueror stacks. I should still win. There we go. Or simply too strong here is a Fage and a D-Blade. I have a full Gore Drinker. He cannot win anymore. Okay, so now at this point in the game, who is enemy win condition? Well, their bot lane is even, their mid laner has one kill, I suppose, but their Lucian is out of the game, their Rankin is out of the game, so my biggest job is to never die, and as long as I never die, this game should be completely good for me. Okay, uh, I could maybe roam to mid? No, I think I want to stay top. Rankin has no ult. I should look to kill the tier 1 turret before I start mo moving anywhere else on the map. We're getting the Herald here. This is level 6, he has a Tiamat. So whenever... Oh, there's a... Okay, I respect it. I got Gore Drinker. Triumph? Oh, okay, we died. Wow, that listen combo kind of caught me off guard. I'll be honest, Jet. I did not expect him to do a combo like that. I didn't, even, I didn't have time to react. 
Okay, my team cleans up though, so that's very good. So what is my item next going to be? It's going to be cleaver. And now I can showcase you guys. I will have 60, but now I can showcase you guys that whenever I Q delay, I can full um, get, get my cooldown back completely. No, I don't like him taking the turret here. He takes all my gold. No, my money. It's okay. We've got to look for other ways to find gold then. Okay, so now when I Q delay, look. Right, I'm going to start my first Q. It's 8 seconds cooldown now, but instead, when I Q1 and Q2, now look with my Q3. Boom, it's instantly back. And this is what makes Riven so hard and strong to deal with. I'm just going to take this rep off here. Okay. And then I can look to counter gank in this bot lane here, but I first want to take the rep off. Okay, let's run. So I want to calculate my Q delay to this distance, so I'm going to start Q delaying right now. And now when I arrive here, my Q3 will be... So here I go full Q delay. And now when I go in, my Q is here. Gore Drinker to get the kill. Auto ult. She flashed. I will Q delay again. Q delay. I dodge this. And I Q3. Still have my Conqueror. The Thresh get assist. Game over right here. This guy used flash. This guy used flash. Everybody is out of the game now. The game should be over from here on out. Right? I get Cleaver in my base now as well. So now I have two items. This guy doesn't have one item. Like nobody has one item yet and I already have two. So now we're completely, completely fine. The game should be completely over as long as I don't make mistakes. We go for Death Sense next. Uh, again, I have so much HP with the Gore Drinker and the Cleaver. And when I build Death Sense, also in case you guys didn't know if you read here, the first passive when you get Death Sense is Ignore Pain. 30% of damage taken dealt to you is dealt to you over thir uh, 3 seconds instead. So, when I receive damage, if I get the depth stance, instead of taking 100% damage, I will only take 70% damage, and the other 30% I will take over the next 3 seconds. But I'm able to heal, or heal and shoot that overtime damage as well. So when I have Gore Drinker and I have E-Shoot, so I can shoot to block the damage, but I can also heal, and whenever I get a kill or assist, that overtime damage leaves. So whenever you face full AD comps like this, or very heavy AD comps like this, Death Sense is extremely good, especially when I also have a lot of HP as well. There's a rep of it, a Gore Drinker, but look, my Q delay, does he know? E3, oh, okay, Q delay again. Right, permanently Q delay, permanently Q delay. If he ever walks up a little bit too far, we can EQ3 in. Q delay again. Right, I'm always going to be Q delaying. So watch this. Q3, auto W, EQ out. Not hard. He E's forward. Look, I'm Q delaying again. Q delaying. I have 8 Conqueror stacks. And now, E, auto Q, ult, and kill. Q delaying again. You see, I'm always Q delaying. And that is a double cast combo. So how do we perform the double cast? At the end of your E animation, you're able to perform two abilities at once. Watch this. So what I did was E and then I auto attack WQ. Look, E, auto, WQ. I will kill this guy as well because I have Gore Drinker. Okay. Baited Renata as well. Lovely. Now we're just too strong. Nobody can stop us anymore. We're gonna get three items. This guy thinks he can fight me. No match for my Q delay. So I'm Q delaying again. Will he know? Will he know? Okay, he knows. He knows about the Q delay. You see, I'm always Q delaying. Once I get 50 haste, I'm permanently going to be Q delaying because nobody can really play against it. Only when I'm fighting sometimes and I need the damage, I'll spam my Qs. Right, so I'm Q delaying again. Watch this. Flash Q3. Why? I have Q again. And that. Q delaying again. Alright, Q delaying again. Alright, I'm not spamming it. And now we go. And look, my Q is back up every time. That's how you make Riven so broken, right? It's the Q delay, it's all in the Q delay. Now we have Death Dance, but uh, I think enemy team has said that the game is over. So, that is how we utilize Q delay. Then we become super strong like that, and... That's uh, that's why Riven is so broken like this. Alright, we got our death stance. And now we can look for our next item, which in my opinion is going to be Guardian Angel. Um, the reason we go for Guardian Angel is because ultimately they have no AP damage besides this guy. And as the more defensive I build, the stronger I will become. <coughs> Okay, I just this ranked is super nice. I don't want to make him feel bad. All right, now let's wrap up the game. I'm strong enough. 
let's finish it now. I have three items. I'll show you guys also what I mean with the with the damage that I'm taking over time. So right here, I'm gonna EQ over the wall. I have my Q back again, right? Permanently Q delay. And look, the damage I'm supposed to take over time here, if I get the kill, it disappears. You see? That's what I mean with the Death passive. So now I'm taking overtime damage again, but when I get the kill, it disappears every time. Okay, I got some damage after from the third shot, but that's how it works. So that's why Death Sense is so broken on Riven, because you can permanently heal and shoot all the damage you take. Alright, Q delaying again. I mean, if you guys haven't known by now, we're Q delaying, okay? We're Q delaying always. Now look, I can just dive this guy. Why? Q delay. And we don't run away again. Right, so how can he really play against it if I just permanently walk away when I'm Q delaying, and then when I have it, then I walk up. Just be annoying, all the time. Okay, gotta respect this Ignite here, though. Okay, yeah, this is not good. I'll make sure I don't lose my shutdown. Okay, they killed this in, though. And then I'll turret here. We're cute lane. Okay. Nice, alright. Now this should be ending the game. Lovely! Alrighties. Yeah, so uh, the Gore Drink was the best in this matchup. We snowballed from level 1 and then um, we made sure we played relatively disciplined. And then once we got our Gore Drinker and our CDR boots, we started Q delaying and that only expanded more and more and more. And then we took over the game and won it. Beautiful! Alrighties. Alright, this game. We banned nothing. Why? Because Mama didn't raise a bitch. Let's go. Let's see what we're up against. We have an AP jungler, AP mid, which is already very nice because our uh, damage profile on top side is going to be mixed, which is always super nice for Riven. Because if your opponents are able to rush tabbies, it's annoying. So having an AP jungler and an AP mid is already very nice for a champion like Riven. Let's say like the worst combinations you could have as uh, Riven top is champions like Graves, Viego, Hacker, and these kind of champions. Okay, so let's see. This could be Zen of support because he banned Blitzcrank. And Akali mid because he banned Ekaterina, and then Yon top because he banned Timo. So I think we're against Yon. So I will take armor. And this game, we are going to go for sorcery. Uh, I don't need resolve against Yon. I'd like to go for sorcery this game. Uh, Transcendence is very good because it will give me 8, or sorry, 10 ability haste at level 8. And Nimbus Loke is a very good pairing with Riven because whenever you press Ignite or you press Flash, you gain burst movement speed towards your opponent. Also, we take Alacrity this game instead of anything else because ultimately they have no CC besides the Zerath E, so I don't need Tenacity. Uh, armor is standard here. I could opt for health because Yon has a little bit of max damage with magic damage and um, physical damage, but I think it is still more beneficial for me to just run armor. And Conqueror, of course, Triumph, plus stand, very standard. Uh, into this comp, they have, they don't have a lot of burst, right? They have Diana, Akali, and Zero that deal a lot of magic damage. However, building Maul against that is enough. So this game, I'm going to be opting for a Hydra game. So they don't, my matchup in the top side doesn't have too much damage, right? Uh, this Diana, of course, she does have burst, but she doesn't have uh, too much burst in the early game. So I don't need Gore Drink in this game. These are the type of games where I go Hydra for. Uh, so for the first four waves here, they have a Diana jungle. We have a Fiddlestick jungle. Both junglers kind of want to play for the level 6 before I have to really be scared of them, but I'm still going to be looking to try and see if I can scout where the Diana is starting. Now, for the matchup in top side, uh, lethal tempo champions, generally speaking, will be stronger than Riven in the level 1. So champions like Yasuo with Exhaust, Yon with Exhaust, Jax, uh, Trindamere, these type of champions beat Riven level 1. But, this guy is playing with Ignite. So now it's more so skill. If he has Exhaust, I automatically lose. If he has Ignite, I can try and dodge one or two of his Qs and then I could still win. So that I can kill him before he kills me, realistically, right? But keep in mind, Lethal Tempo level 1, it gives his Q back more faster. And of course, is going to auto-attack faster. So it is still tricky. And now what I'll be looking to do is get my ward down in the early game as I always do. I don't spot the Yon. Alright, so here I see his Flesh Ignite, Lethal Temple Resolve, very aggressive setup. So what I do in these type of games is two things. If I am able to, I will look for the priority, because ultimately, if I get my level 2 first, any losing matchup or even matchup becomes a winning matchup, because if I'm level up, I get 80 extra HP, I get uh, extra damage, armor, attack speed, plus I get an extra ability, right? Which is the most important thing. So here, my goal in the early game is to try and get priority, because by getting priority, I I can uh, pretty much secure my lightning phase. Now, it looks like Fiddlesticks is going to be pathing into top, he's starting Wolves, so you could do Wolves, Grumps, Blue, path into top. And I'm not sure yet what the Diana's doing. Also, the Diana's PT8, which is uh, interesting. 
Okay, so I'm going to be walking on the second bush here. Okay, if you almost there, it could have been a little tricky. And now, like I said, what I want to try and do is look to play. Okay, he's here. I just get his bone plating and I run away because he wins there. Okay, I got his bone plating. Okay, I got hit, so I have to potion. Good spacing by him. Right, so I don't go for the extended fight there because he wins the level one. He's looking to also play for priority. If he queues three into me here, however, I can win because there's no bone plating. Okay, so here I win. Oh, I misspaced a little bit. This is good, good trade. I have three potions, he has one potion, so it's good. I missed my space in there. Uh, I, I misclicked twice. Okay, I get my Q back here though. I get, he gets level two from this melee me. I gotta be wary of that. He killed the caster, so he doesn't get level two. He gets level two, but so do I here. Level up timer's chat. Oh, we got E. He didn't potion yet though. And so he just loses. I flush. The reason I flash here is because by flashing, I also get enough time to push in this wave before the Yon is back, right? So right now, I didn't have to use my Q or my W to chase the Yon. That allows me to use it on the wave, and it also allows me to push this way faster. Now, if I farm perfectly, I can go for D-Blade Longsword. I also just look for triple Longsword um, setup. Right, so now, because I flashed on the Yon, I know that this next wave I can push before the Yon comes back, and that is why it's worth it. Now, of course, this comes with a little bit of experience. I saw the window right there, but it's more so mad or thinking yeah, that after I kill the Yon, what's going to happen? I have to push the wave out as well. How fast can I be? Okay, let's flash. I get this. So I can go D-Blade, Longsword, and, uh, and Potion, but I said we'll do double Longsword refillable. And again, the reason as to why is because I want to rush Hydra, right? So if I put all my gold into the Hydra, I'm going to get my first item ridiculously fast. Now... The safest thing to do here would be to build D-Blade Longsword. It gives me a little bit of extra HP, it allows me to stat check my opponent better. But here I feel like I'm also going to be a bit more confident, and I'm going to go for the triple Longsword setup, because I know that Fiddlesticks is topside here, but Diana is also topside. And Yon is the bigger wave here, so I don't necessarily want to stat check him or I want to fight him, I just want the Yon to push this. Because if I ever die when the wave is pushing towards me, it is very bad. So even though I have triple Longsword here, and he only has D-Blade refillable, I still want to play a little bit safe here, because ultimately, if I die, it is extremely bad for the game. So I'm just going to see he's level 4, I'm level 4, but look at his wave as well. So right now, I'm just going to allow him to crash, and then on the next wave, when it bounces into him again, I will hit my level 5 first, I will have the bigger medium wave, and it will be good for me. Now, if the Yon doesn't push here, I will try and hold it here. This is what I refer to as the happy spot, and this is the happy spot because here, I never... Oh, Diana's here, 28 farm. Okay, so I'm never gankable here, Yon is gankable, and it's also very hard for Yon to hit me here because I'm so close to my turret. So I'm going to try and get his bone plating out first here. If I get his bone plating, oh. Okay, I got his bone plating. And now I want to get my level 5, and then if I get my level 5, I can fight him. I'm going to hit level 5 from this minion. Level up timers. This should kill him. Oh, I got to be a little careful actually. Yeah. He might have E again. No, I still gotta be careful. Get the cannon EXP. I forgot that he still had Flush Ignite. I actually disrespected him there. Well played by him. Oh, okay, the full combo killed him there. So the combo I did there, it was like a burst combo. So I did E to get close, Auto, W, Q, and then Q Alt, and that finished him off. So right, when your opponents are low HP, you can do a double cast combo to do extra burst onto your opponent. Yeah, I played with there earlier though. And again, here, if I had the D-Blade, I think I would actually win the fight against him because having the extra HP would allow me to get my cooldowns back. But because I had the triple longsword, he saw it was a little bit more greedy. That's why the fight was also a little bit trickier. But it's okay. We ended up getting away with it. He used both summoners. I also could... I, I, I truthfully, honestly, forgot that he still had Flesh Ignite. And that's what made us way closer than it really should have been. And now we go for the pickaxe. Now, here I did beat him mechanically, right? Again, the combo I did was... E, auto, right, E into auto, and then at the end you can still WQ, look like this. I can use two abilities at once. So it's a little bit more burst, so I do E, auto, WQ, then auto, and Q auto, and that's why he died. That's like the highest burst combo that you can do. Okay, so now I have ult, I have big item lead, and I have my ignite as well. So I want to look to all in this Yon before he gets level 6. I will literally jump onto him the second I get back into lane, because I'm just much stronger right now. Then has 42 CS, so she's probably pathing into topside again, is my assumption. I want to just all end him before he is 6. E, ult, ignite. Okay, now I don't kill the Yon, but it's actually completely fine. You know why? Because I put him in an absolutely impossible position. Right now, Yon has to choose. Is he going to recall? Well, if he does that... Oh, he did hit level 6 though. Hmm. I was going to say, if Yon recalls here, he's going to lose like the full life and I get played. But, 
Hmm. Okay. Oh, it was kind of awkward. I should have instantly E ult and then ignite for the movement speed and then I would maybe kill. But it's okay. I'm gonna make this wave push back into me by holding the wave here. And you see, instead of this wave meeting in the neutral position now, it's meeting closer to my side of the lane, which means this wave is pushing back into me. He has no flash. He does have ult though. And I'm a little bit scared of Diana because I have no idea where the Diana is at. And she could already be level 6. I flash in 30. He has no bone plating yet, because I see it right here, right? So I'm try tr trying to track his bone plating here. I'm close to level 7 as well. So I think here the best thing for me to do is just play for my level 7 first. And then see what I can do. Also, my flash is in 20. Oh. I tried to do the double cast combo there again. Okay, now he's low HP though and no bone plating. So now I kind of feel confident that I can dive him. But I gotta still try and do this as slow as I can. I'm waiting to slow push his wave so I get my flash. And I need to keep all my abilities up, okay? All my abilities up. And I don't want to use my E. I want to use my E as a 2 to run away. So I'm going to go run into him. I'm going to wait for him to use his W. Wait for the shield to go away. Then W, auto. Oh. oh, honestly, he's playing this so well. And he got level 7. So, hmm. Okay, what I can do here, though, is E, flash, auto, WQ. That's the combo. E, flash, auto, WQ. He won't respect it. Okay, I missed my auto. I did E flash WQ. Diana's bot, because she ganked here. Okay, nice. We get some plates, and then we'll have our Hydra. So, honestly, this Yoru is playing it pretty good mechanically, but just not quite enough. Just not quite enough. He survived the dive against me, though. That was impressive. But now we did get our third kill. We just need this plate, and then we recall. We don't stay for more plates, because it wouldn't change our recall purchase anyways. Actually, it would. We'll get boots, but it's okay. We recall anyways, because I'm too low HP, and also... If I recall right now, Yon does not have enough time to push in this wave before I am back. So I could look to kill him again. But if I stayed for the plate, I would lose that opportunity. So here it is simply better for me to kill. Now I put this ward down, or to recall rather. I put this ward down so I can just buy Sweeper. And now I see how the Yon is going to play. So you see here, Yon is not back yet. He's going to arrive back in maybe 2-3 seconds. But he will not have enough time to push in this wave because I instantly recall. So you see he's back already. But he's going to maybe try and hard push this. But I can get a freeze simply because I didn't look for a second plate. Right, exactly as I said. And this is what I refer to as understanding tempo, understanding reset timers, aka Quamebs! Let's go! So now I'm gonna Q delay as I have 35 haste. So we can start Q delaying a little bit. And now we can start doing the little Q delay tricks. So I want to permanently Q delay, it goes on a 30 second cooldown. Alright. I don't necessarily need to kill the Yon, there's also different ways for me to expand my lead, and I think he's on. Scuttlecrab, so I'm going to actually hard push this. So he has to make a decision, go for Scuttlecrab or lose a plate. So now I, in theory, don't even need to kill the Yon, and I'll show you guys that I can expand my lead without killing him. So by hard pushing this wave here and going for the plate, he has 52 gold. Maybe he's doing the Scuttle, I think he is. I get 175 gold. And now I'm gonna proxy this wave. So I get 175 gold from the plate. Yeah, he, did, he has 56 now, so he did do it. I'm gonna... That's not the way you want to approach that. Okay, yeah, so he was doing the scuttle, but he's greedy because I flash and igni uh, ult ignite there. Okay, so I said I don't necessarily have to look for kills, but of course, if he walks into me like that, then I will kill him. And the reason I was allowed to play so aggressive is because Diana was bot side, right? Okay, so now I want to hard push this wave and instantly recall because I'm going to get the biggest power spike that I can realistically get, which is CDR boots right here. Now that I've finished CDR boots, I'll have 55 ability haste. This is the biggest spike I can ever get. Okay, let's see. I get CDR boots and I get long term. Now, I, you could argue I could run bot here, but I don't have flash, I don't have ult so I don't want to look for that. Plus, there's still a tier, two, tier 1 turret in top lane that I want to roam for. So even though my bot lane is struggling against our bot lane, I don't want to start moving yet, although this move timer could have maybe been pretty good. It's simply because there's still a tier 1 turret to play for. So here, if I full Q delay like this, right, you see my Q will be back. Alright, Yon doesn't have flash, so when coming back to lane here, chat, instantly Q delay. Boom. And okay, okay. Q delay again. And I'm gonna E... 3Q into him. Oh, I messed it up. Man. Okay, Q delay again. A Kali seems to be bold. Q delay. I get my level 10 from this minion. And then E, third Q. And I want him to feel like he can Q into me. Okay, we'll play it. Q delay again. They're not really falling for it. But it's okay, we can play for Harold instead. We don't have to kill him. We're playing too much for kills here. Let's just get this wave and move to Herald, help my jungle out. Oh, there's three men ganking mid. Also, my mythic this game, I can go for a lot of mythics. But you see, nobody in any team is building armor. And it doesn't look like anybody is going to be building armor, right? Zara doesn't build armor, Ezreal doesn't build armor, Yon doesn't build armor, Diana doesn't build armor, and Akali doesn't build armor. So, here, I want to go for Dustblade as my mythic because it gives me a, a flat lethality and ability haste, right? I'm gonna last hit it, so I get... Oh, no, he lasted it. I'm gonna take it, though. 
I hope you don't mind. And um, this uh, gives me ability haste and movement speed, and it gives me lethality, right? Eclipse gives me armor penetration, but do I need the armor penetration in this game? No, because I don't have armor, right? So I just hard push this wave, and I don't think I want the Herald here. I want to use the Herald later for mid lane. So I'm going to instead just hard push this wave and look to get this plate under his nose because I'm strong enough for that right now. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit punished, but I have the Hydra to heal. So now I'm gonna full Q delay. Right, Q delaying as I'm doing, I get level 11 here too. And if he walks up here, I could actually maybe look to kill him. Q delay again. Okay, so this is what I want to show you. Full Q delay. And now he's dead. Because my Q is instantly back up, right? So I literally Q delay, I EQ3 on top of him, W ult, QQ. I didn't even auto attack, maybe one auto attack there, but basically everything was, all the damage came from my Q just because of one Q delay. So how do I expand my lead here? I'm gonna get this tier 1 turret in top lane, then I'm going to recall, spend all my gold, and then I want to look to hydra mid or bot to get even more plates and get even more gold, right? And then I can really, really expand my lead. Also, I want to hit this wave a little bit slower, this turret, so I want to allow this wave to walk more through the lane so I can farm it here instead of the wave walking too far. So now, because I took a little bit more time, my wave walks slower, and now I can farm this wave right here. Zelt is here. I just want to push this wave because Jon isn't back yet. And by pushing in this wave, I can... Almost recall, I think what I want to do here is stay for 2750 gold because then I can just get my mythic and then recall and then I'm two items on the map, right? And again, I could look for a uh, gore drinker as well as a mythic, but I think Dustblade is better simply because they have zero armor. If this zone overstays, I can actually kill him again because my ult is back. So as per usual, before we go, Q delay. Alright, my Q is still delaying and then I'm just going to ult. Alt WQ and Q again. Very simple. Diana is here, Ezreal is here, Zealot is here. Okay, I'm gonna Herald actually. Because this turret gives me 600 gold. So even though I could get plates right here, this will give me 600 gold. I think it's worth more. And also plates are going to fall off pretty soon, so I should do it right now. Because plates fall off at minute 14. So if I can get this turret right here, I never have to go top lane anymore. Right, because we've got all the turrets. And then we can start looking to expand our lead across the rest of the map. Who is their win condition? Diana is strong. Actually, all of their teammates are pretty strong. But I am super strong, right? They have one item. I already have two items. So what am I going to itemize here? Obviously magic resist, right? AP damage, AP damage, AP... Ooh, nice. Well done, team. So I need to get magic resist here first. So I'm going to be looking for Maul. And uh, after Maul, I'll probably look for a death stance against the Ezreal and the Yon, and then I'm going to be absolutely unkillable. This next dragon is good for me, and I'm going to ping that I want to be bot. Me bot, please. The reason I want to be bot is because I can play for the tier 1 turrets, I can look to kill the Ezreal, I can look to kill the Zerath, and again, as I'm always doing, I'm going to be looking to Q-Delay. Alright, Q-Delay here. Alright, Ezreal's eating forward. Go to Q-Delay again. I have Ignite to get movement speed towards him. Goodbye, Ezreal. He healed as well. And now I'm going to be bot in here as well. I'm sorry, Jinx. I hope you close your eyes there. I didn't do it. It wasn't me. So okay, I'm gonna Q-Delay. Drop my phone there. Oops. And again, the best way to set up a dive? Well, what did you know? Q-Delay. It's not even hard at this point. Okay, a little bit of damage. I'm gonna wait for his Q3, and then we can go. Oh, my Bart though. Oh, this Jon is kind of a playing with him. Okay, so okay, we got the kill, we got the flash. Um, yeah, so we got our two items from top lane by just playing discipline, getting some good kill windows, especially with the Q lays. And uh, yeah, I mean now it's pretty easy to go forward. Okay, and this is also the biggest thing I recommend any Riven player to just really start in uh, implementing in their gameplay. Very often, Riven players can do the like the, the, the Q auto, Q auto, Q auto, they can do their double cast, but they simply don't Q delay enough, right? And you see, I'm getting all my kills from just consistently always utilizing Q delay. Whenever I walk somewhere, I'm calculating the distance that I would realistically need for my Q delay to come back. Here, I have Q delayed again, so I get over the wall, and boom, I have Q again! Alright, I'm Q delaying again! So I'm calculating the distance towards this Astro. Alright, I'm gonna hop over the wall. But boom, I instead have Q again. Okay, let's Q delay, right? Watch this. I'm gonna flash on top of him. We'll never expect it. So I'm Q delaying. Q delaying again. He expected it, my bad. Really expected now, though. Okay, one more. One more Q delay. We need one more Q delay. One more Q delay. Oh, 
Oh, right, the S-Flash as well. One more kill lay. It's the final kill lay. There we go! We just needed five kill delays and then it worked, right? <gasps> okay, we need to not die though. Just five kill delays and that finally got them. <laughs> Anyways! Kill delay! Alright, so Yon is here, Diana is here, and Akali is 1 HP, plus two people are dead, so we have full tempo on the map to actually try and get the 600 gold here as well. This 600 gold would make me completely, completely, completely unstoppable, it's even more gold, right? So let's get this, Kyoto, 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 as fast as I can, use all my abilities for the extra auto attack damage. Now we're gonna have Mo as well, next item is going to be Death Dance, and um, it is GG. Now I don't want to fight here, it's great. Oh, okay, I'm gonna have to save the board. I'm gonna kill delay, as I always do. Because I kill Lei, I use my Q. I need to kill her so I go to Duskblade. I won't save me. Okay, not worth it. Zero gets the 1k though. I think if I didn't get exhausted and this guy didn't flash, maybe I can like live a little bit longer, get my ult and kill them more, but it's great. Now here, also when you're ahead, a golden rule I have, whenever we are ahead, build defensive. <sighs> The reason we built defensive is when you are already ahead, as you guys can clearly see, I can kill everybody, right? I have enough damage to kill everybody, they have zero armor, nothing. But they can still kill me as well because I'm relatively squishy. But that's why we built defensive, because if I'm ahead and I can kill them, but then I built defensive, they cannot kill me anymore. Enemy team can just say, how can play? Now we're gonna do something really disgusting, which is buy a red potion here. Because... I am so strong right now, and I just actually want to take over the game right here. If I get one good skirmish right now, I can watch it everybody. I have 360 AD. Just for reference, I probably have double hers. More. I have triple her AD. Right? That is how strong I am. The red potion even amplifies that. And we have the herald. I want to try and use it to mid. I, I did a wall hop. Let's go. So now, I'm just super, super strong. And I want to go for mid. We have the herald. No, don't take it. Let's go mid. We have herald. I don't want to go top, I don't want to go bot, we have the tier 2 turret here with the tier 2 turret on top. I want my fiddlesticks to come here with his herald, but he sadly does not want to. So then I'm gonna look for some kills. I know Ezreal doesn't have flash, so let's see if we can move behind him here. We have done full kill lay. That's why we buy red potion, and that is why we Q delay. So again, I closed the distance, I had my Q delayed, and we kill them! Alright, whilst we're hitting the turret, guess what? You delay. Okay, guess what? You delay. Are you starting to see a pattern? Watch this. My Q is delayed. What? We have Harold here. Okay, I'm Q delaying. I want to hear you guys say it too. Okay, I'm Q delaying. Make it a habit for yourself. Q delay. I need to hit this once. Alright, uh, we got it. Chat. Guess what? Q is getting delayed. That is how I make all my kills. Watch this, okay? Q delay, Q delay, Q delay. And now. Woohoo! And I have Q again! Goodbye! Woohoo! And uh, guess what? We're Q delaying again! Q delaying! And I'm gonna jump over this again, and Ezra won't see it coming, and I have my Q again! And... I have my Q again! I have my Q delaying again! I have permanent Q! It is like I'm playing Earth! That is how you make Riven broken! You perma Q delay, the Zerp Potion was my best choice, 1v9! That is how you carry your games! We play in our lane with our fundamentals, and mid to late we use our tempo for the neutral objectives, we try and refrain from being greedy like I died with my 1k, we permanently kill delay, we look to utilize our lead with our items, we roam around the map, and we pretty much kill everybody. Let's get it! So, as a top player, what you should always do and try and secure as less latest pick as possible. Simply Please because of Yo, Mr. Kill Apple, thank you for your prime. Uh, Noctis, I have that idea in mind. I'm thinking of making a full in-depth Riven matchup guide, but it takes a lot of time. So you're saying you're gonna open a restaurant? That's exactly what I said, yes. I'm not gonna bet anything. I'm not gonna bet anything as well. Will you do Yon, Swain, Vladimir top? I will for sure do Yon. Yasuo probably as well. Vladimir probably as well. Swain, I'm not sure. Swain is very small players that play in top. What champions do I think are good to OTP? Every champion kind of works, 
But uh, there's also meta champions, right? Champions that are in, in general stronger. So right now, uh, I would say the champions that are easiest to pick up and are really good is Renaton, Yon, Garen, Trinamere. For AB champions, probably Mordekaiser. What champions abuse fundamentals the best? Mm, that's generally speaking champions that have really strong early games because how I see it most matchups are decided level 1 to level 4 So that's why I generally speaking really love to play these early strong early game strong champions What Mordecai could have done to not lose his game a lot of things too much to go like Really I can I can't explain everything from his POV when I'm explaining my POV We'll even do like Probably like choke at unranked to masters as well, by the way. We'll also play tanks I'm not only gonna play like strong early game champions. I'm also gonna play champions like Garrett. I'm gonna go everywhere like, for example, I can also do, like, Poppy on Ranked to Master. Alright, uh, we're pick Riven. Uh, do we need to nest this game? Probably, because they have uh, Leona, Garen, and Jin. Uh, it's quirky though. So, right now, the CCs they have is Leona Q, Leona ult, Jin W, but I can dodge Jin W. And then it's Garen Q, Silence, right? So, it's Garen Q, Silence, Leona Q, Leona ult, Jin W. I think that's not enough, and I can dodge a lot. Only Garen Q and Leona Q I can dodge, so I'll go with Alacrity because I'm confident. First four waves! First four waves, that is where we always start. So, okay, so let's see. We're playing against a Garen, and what I always do, right, is these first four waves, I'm just scouting. Scouting everything that I can see. I see a Briar in the early game, kind of weak champion. To be fair, I don't even know how strong she is in the early game, but I don't think she's that strong. Listen, very strong early game champion. Garen is kind of weak in the early game, but he is playing Conqueror Sorcerer. Well, that means that he's probably playing the same setup as I do, where he's playing with Nimbus Cloak, right? So he doesn't have Resolve, very similar to the Mordecai from last game. So no Resolve in this guy, but he does have Flesh Ignite. So that's one thing to keep in mind. And then this guy has, um, they have the stronger early game jungler. So again, what I always try and do, right? Always try and do is make sure that I'm okay in my first voice. I don't care what elo you're playing in right now. If you're silver, if you're gold, if you're platinum, emerald, diamond, if you're bronze, if you're iron, I really don't care what you're playing right now. The most important thing is this. Think back to some of your recent games. If your first waves go well, your lane is nice. Your game feels nice to play. If your first four waves go wrong, you're permanently behind in laning phase, and a lot of things that happen after that are a result of how the first four waves went. So that would be my biggest priority target if you, I'm trying to improve right now, is try to really focus on my first waves, especially with a champion like Riven that is required to snowball, right? So we're doing education Riven only today. It is really important to focus on your first waves. So the first thing that I want you guys to try and learn as a first step is just scouting setups, scouting the summoners, scouting the jungle champions in the early game. The second thing we do is try and see where both junglers are pathing in the early game. I want to see where enemy jungle is pathing and I want to see where my jungler is pathing. Now Riven is really good at scouting this, so what I can just do is Q delay like this, I hope over, and then we wait here a little bit. Now sometimes they could be stacking in here if you die GG coach div. But as you guys can see it works for me a lot of times. I might even get some kills sometimes the junglers are defending here, I just kill them. But if not, then we maybe wait a little bit. And then boom, we want this. So now it looks like Briar is going to be passing from bot into top, which means I'm strong side. Why am I strong side? Because my jungler is going to be passing into top in the first waves, meaning I can rely on my jungler. If he was passing away from me, I know that I would not have a jungler in the early game in top side. And now we need to figure out what Lucina is doing too. So let's focus here. This could be a Gore Drinker game. And the reason this could be a Gore Drinker game is because they have 80 damage. 80 damage, 80 damage, right? I also really want to talk about builds. And this is burst, and this is burst. HP is really good against a champion that works with execute with true damage here and true damage in his ultimate. Okay, so I got I saw a word right here. And it looks like enemy jungle is passing to top and my jungle is passing to top. He has a D shoot start. Alright, that's all the information I need. And now we start lighting. I want to look for priority because I am the stronger early game champion. Okay, he auto attacks me, that's okay. I like that aggression from him. If he cute me, I would retaliate. Alright, so I'm just trying to get the priority by hitting the wave. The reason I go for priority is because if I get my level 2 first, I will be stronger. He's pushing pretty aggressive. He might want to trade me here, so I'm gonna... Okay, he used to kill me in, so I will trade very heavily. This is good. So now, I only need one melee and one caster to get my level 2. I know that because I'm very certain about my level up timers. So here I'm gonna focus the casters. I'm gonna walk up if he goes to walk up a little bit forward here, because I'm gonna get my level 2, but he might not expect it. And now, I will literally just win my lane by one level up timer here. Boom! Lane is 1. That's how you utilize level up timers, and I'm telling you, this trick of knowing your level up timers exactly gives me solo kills in the early game up to masters easily. Easily I get solo kills like that. He has no potion, he's forced to walk up for less hits. I get level 3 here from one Marmion. Watch this, this means he's gonna get me level 3. Okay. 
I'm still gonna try and push him, but I'm just gonna do third wave crash. I know Lucid is pathing into top. I could maybe find the Lucid on his wrap up as well here, because he is pathing into top. I don't, I don't think I can kill the Garen here. Okay, Lucid is showing. He has 12 CS, but he has a blue buff and a rep buff already. So Lucid has done like blue buff, maybe Gromp, and then rep buff instantly. So I can kind of go everywhere. Now I'm gonna do a thing where I just W auto and then EQ out. It's okay. He uses W as well. That's really good to know. And this wave is bouncing into me. I gotta keep in mind though that Lucid can come topside right now. Briar is coming into topside. I'm gonna keep my passive by hitting here. I still have two passive stacks. My spirit is not he has no W. If he flashes, I'll flash after him. Okay, it doesn't even flash. Now, first thing first, after I solo kill, first thing I do, I check where next wave is at. You see how close this is? I want this next wave to walk through the lane so that I can farm it comfortably. This is really important because it's gonna help me be faster on pushing this wave. So you see, by just not hitting the minions, I allow these minions to come here, and now I can push them in a relatively comfortable spot, not too close under the turret, right? And that saves me tempo timer to get a faster recall here later. So it's very important that I met this, let this lane walk through the wave or let this wave walk through the lane rather, and now we recall. Now, 1k gold is a very awkward purchase. And that is because if I buy pickaxe refillable, it's it's like, okay, I guess, but I prefer to preferably buy like another lower right here, right? But I just go pickaxe refillable and that's okay here. Like I said, I want HP in this matchup. The biggest reason why I want HP is because Garen plays to execution ranges, right? So he has his ult, he has his ignite. Uh, so in order to counter that, I want to build HP. And that is why we go Gore Drink in this game. Also, they have a lot of physical damage this game. So if they have a lot of physical damage, and if I go Gore Drinker Death Stance, I'll have a lot of HP and I'll have a lot of armor. It's going to be a lot harder for them to kill me. Alright, so I see Lysin here, 24 CS, I'm assuming, so he's done all his camps right now, but he started here, right, because we had the ward on the rep off, so his camps are on both sides, I know Lysin is not going to be top set for a while, so now my first goal is to try and thin out this wave, so it keeps pushing into me, but it doesn't get too big. I have the item lead, he doesn't have potions, so I have the sustain lead, oh well, his Q was still there. I get level 5 first. So I want to thin out this wave, simply how he's trying to push it in. He's level 5 now too, but if I don't thin out this wave, it will just crash into my turret, right? If it goes for a ward... He is. I will utilize that timer to thin out quickly. Alright, still pushing it to me somewhat, but now I can at least hold the wave here. This forces the Garen to walk up for last hit, and you see how he just got level 5, but I'm already halfway to 6. So here I'm going to try and utilize the fact that I'll get level 6 first to try and get a solo kill here again. I have the item lead, if he goes for last hit, that's where I punish. Right, so I'm standing next to the last hit, and then just QW auto and EQ out. Very simple. He used Q and W here, so I have to cool down advantage because I Q'd late as well. If he cues me here, he would just lose. Okay, that's okay. I, I assume Lee Sin is going to go bot side, but he could come top side. I assume he's going bot side though. One minion for level 6. So I want to try and bait the Garen to go for these last hits while I'm going to get level 6. So I'm going to stand backwards, right, to bait him to walk forward. But then, boom, I get level 6. Garen doesn't expect it. Are you going to flash? Uh, you should flash. Alright, so that's a very simple thing, right? Very simple trick. If I stand backwards, that... Like, I don't know, emotionally, whatever, it, uh, it like baits Garen to feel safe to walk forward, right? So I'm one minute off from my level 6, so I stand backwards to psychologically bait the Garen to walk up for the last hit because he thinks he is safe because I walk backwards. But then, boom, I step forward, I get my level 6, and then I get the kill. Now I'm gonna recall here. You might be wondering, Alois, why didn't you get the plate? That is because right now, if I stay for the plate, I lose my bounce timer. Because Garen could, like, if I stay for this plate, I would recall later, and I would probably lose my bounce timer. But now, by instantly recalling, I get the items I wanted anyways. This doesn't really change my recall. And now, I should be in time before Garen can hard push this wave as well, and I can get a freeze again. Right? I didn't even lose the plate. That is lucky, honestly. I didn't calculate that. But now, whilst Garen is going to try and hard push this, as he should, I should be in time to still freeze this. And if I stayed for the plate, even if it's 4 to 5 seconds extra that I would have stayed for the plate, I would have lost this bounce timer and this freeze timer. So here, I prioritize recalling quicker to use my temple. Hello guys, I'm Aloys. Today Thank you for the prime, brother. So now Garen is 6. He doesn't have ignite. I do, but I have a big item lead. So I'm still very confident in fighting him here because of my item lead. Gonna ignite for the movement speed. I can't kill him, that's okay, use flash. I'm gonna ping that. It's gonna be 12 minutes because he flashed at minute 7. And now what I'm gonna do is slow push this wave, hard push here, crash into his turret. If he recalls, that's okay, I take the plate, I get 600 gold, I get my gore drinker. If he stays, I'll have my ultimate and I'll kill him. So whatever Garen decides, I still get a good outcome. So I'm gonna slow push. Why do I slow push? To allow this wave to walk further. Now I can push this wave in a relatively comfortable spot. You see he stayed, listen his bot, 46 CS. I'm gonna slow push this to get my old cooldown back. He has no flash. 
He does have W, so I'm going to try and bait out this W. Now, how I will approach this dive is try to see if I can make him use his abilities before I even do anything. I get level 8 here. So I want to walk up here and try to see if I can bait him to use his abilities. There, he uses Q. He uses E. I played slow, right? There's nobody here. I'm going to go E, ult, W. Uh, and it, it's, it's okay, right? The most important thing when diving is to just stay calm. Now, this requires practice, of course, right? But again, the biggest thing is I know Lee Sin is bot. No one can be here. Just play it slow. You know, just play it a little bit. Try and feel it out. I don't have an exact plan before I dive, but the most important thing is to just approach it slowly. Well, same thing here. I don't stay for an extra plate. Why? So I get that bounce timer again. And I kind of look Garen in a position where every time he comes back into land, I'm going to so I can get a long sword because the Gore Dragon gives me sustain anyways. Right? Now, every time you see, when I recoil and go back, Garen doesn't have enough time to push this wave anymore. If he comes back and hard pushes, I freeze again. So how can Garen play? Every time I take my tempo reset, and every time Garen comes back, the wave is slow pushing into me. That means he's forced to walk up for last hits, but look at the item difference. He can't play the game. Garen doesn't have flash, right? And he's forced to walk up for last hits. Why do I go Gordringer again? Burst and burst. And he plays to execution with his ult and ign ignite, right? I don't have ult and ignite, so I should be a little careful here. I have no idea where Lee Sin is at. I know Briar stops at. Okay, so Lee Sin is on Herald, right? Leona's bot, so it's only Lee Sin here. But I still should be a little reserved. You see how this Garen is walking forward somewhat? So, yeah, that's what I'm about to say. Lee Sin is probably here. So now I just play safe. The wave is still slow pushing towards me. So Garen is still forced to walk up for last hits, right? I just need to wait for my ult and my ignite. And this Garen is dead again. So here, I still will go for the Gore Drinker. And then my next item will be Cleaver. So now I have a lot of HP. They cannot burst me anymore. And they have 80, 80, 80. I go Death Stance. They can't kill me anymore. I'll be too tanky. So against these burst heavy top sides, I'll just go Gore Drinker. If they didn't have that much burst, I would go Hydra. I'm very close to level 9. I'll have ult and I'll have ignite. Level 9 here. Kuraga's W as well. Uses W. Okay, a little bit awkward spacing by me. That's okay though. My Kurans are coming back. I still have Conqueror stacks. I don't even have to ult. There you go, chat. Now, what is my goal here? Again, this next wave is already here. Next wave haven't spawned. That's the first thing I check. So what do I do here? I hard push. Why? Because I can get this wave in before the Garen is back. Now, the thing is, I don't necessarily need to recall because I still have everything. I have ult, ignite, everything. So here, I'm going to do a different thing. I'm not going to take just one plate and recall here to play the bounce again. I can stay. I'm assuming Lee Sin is going to go back into both sides here because it just took Herald, right? So I don't have to really be scared of Lee Sin anymore. So I can just continue laning here. And I can maybe even zone this Garen from walking back to turret, and if not that, I can even 2v1 here, arguably. So I'm just gonna get this plate, and now I'm just gonna stand here, and be very annoying. Zone Garen from every resources, I can 2v1 because I'm checking items. If he walks to turret, I'll just kill him. And now we just stay here, and we just stay here, and we chill. Very chill. I disconnected. Oh, I press ult again. Uh, grandpa combo. Anyways, uh, GG. I got the full turret. Hey, that's what I wanted, right? That's what I wanted. Fundamentals and shit. GG. Alright. Nice! Alright, so next up. Who's enemy win condition? Lee Sin is okay. Their bot is losing. Their mid lane is kind of losing. So, right here. I don't really care about killing the Garen again. So, what I do in this moment in the game is I check tap and I try to see... What is enemy weak condition? What's this Lee Sin and maybe their mid laner? Killing this Garen again. I'm double his CS. I'm three levels up. Will killing this Garen again change the outcome of this game chat? If I kill this Garen one more time, will the game be different? No! No, it won't. So what I want to try and do is get dragons, shut down their jungler, shut down their mid laner, shut down their bot lane. I don't need to kill the Garen anymore. So I see the Lee Sin here with Harold. I'm gonna roam here. That's what I want to do. Alternatively, I can also look for mid lane plates. Right? He, this guy wants to herald. Sucks, bro. I'm not gonna allow you to do that. Alright, so now I don't really need to utilize my things to top lane anymore. Okay, Lee Sin's gonna stay here. I'm not gonna give Garen everything for free. I don't have ult yet, so I can't dive here. I stopped the Lee Sin play, now I go back to top lane because I obviously don't want to give Garen everything for free, right? But every time I can get a tempo timer in top side, I will look to roam. Oh, I actually does play the herald. Alright, this Lee Sin is persistent. I respect it. So now... In order to get the biggest tempo timer I can in top lane, what I do is I slow push this wave a little bit. Why do I slow push? Because I want his second wave to spawn as well. Very similar to laning phase, if you're gonna get a bigger roam timer, you slow push wave number one, and I will hard push wave number two. Now the second wave is passes tier to turret, now I can push the second wave as well, and then I won't be on this mid wave, 
but I will be on the next mid wave and I can probably kill the quirky here. So watch this. I'm gonna hard push this wave, as I'm saying. And now I have multiple options. I can look for drone camps. I can't really kill the Garen, but what I can do now is look to run to mid. And I'm gonna be there on the next mid wave. Right now, if I walk to mid, you see this next mid wave will spawn right now. And that is the wave that I will be roaming on. Next top wave, I don't have to be there. I have to collect my turret like very later. But as you guys can see, I did slow push to hard push. And now I'll be there on the next mid wave. And Corky is dead. It's like I'm a psychic chat. It's like Macro and Tempo wins you games. GG. And you ult this, of course. And now, look, I have to do nothing with topside. Why? Look, I don't even collect anything. So this gives me Tempo to hit mid plates. So I got a massive Tempo timer in top lane for slow pushing into hard pushing. And now I kill the Corky. And now I get two plates. And all that Tempo I've used, now I just run back top and collect. But I was only able to have this big of a Tempo timer because I slow pushed into hard push in the side lane. GG. So now we do the same thing. I'm gonna slow push into hard push chat. Slow push into hard push right here. To get a bigger tempo timer. All right, I see the wave is walking. I see Listen is top side, so we gotta be a little bit careful. But he's probably gonna go for the scuttle by the looks of it. And now I hard push this wave. I gotta make sure I don't die. Then I got cleaver, and then I can go to mid, and then I can go to bot, whatever I want to do, right? I can 2v1 still here. Okay, Listen is mid. So again, we do the same thing here. Hard push this wave as fast as possible. After I'm done pushing this wave, I get my tempo timer again. But this time, I'm gonna use my tempo to reset. And in the meantime, this side move will bounce back into me. So Garen has to collect this. Garen has to collect this. And then push out the, this wave before I have to start collecting. So now I can go everywhere I want, right? I could go into both sides for a little quick wrap off. I like that idea. Listen, died, okay. And uh, I could go into bot lane, kill our bot lane. Uh, I don't know, I could go AFK, gank your mom, I don't game. You know, I have a lot of options here. Anyways, wrap off is my first priority. So. That's how you utilize Tempo. Now, of course, we got Destin's third. Because they have 80, 80, 80. And our Quirky is AP, of course. So now, I will look to shut down their bot lane. Because I have Tempo. Look, I still don't have to collect anything here. Can I fight their bot lane? That is the question. She doesn't have Hex Flash, so she might have Flash. Doesn't matter, kill their any carry or kill the support. Alright, still don't have to collect anything on top because we have tempo here. Alright, we gotta look for the Corky next. Alrighties. Hello, Corky. Where are you gonna go? You gonna open the wall again? It's like deja vu. I found you here earlier too. Alright, we kill the Corky as well. Last it, of course. I mean, because if you don't last it, uh, what are you honest? I'll give him the cannon this time. And there's a scuttle here, there's a Herald here. To be fair, I think one of the most consistent plays for me to do right now is Harold. Why? Harold gives me 300 gold always, doesn't matter if I'm ahead or behind. So right now, all I have to do is not make mistakes. If I don't die, this Garen can never catch back up in terms of resources, right? So what I want to do is get this Harold and then look for tier 2 turns. Tier 2 turns always give 600 gold, so this is the most consistent way to still expand my lead without losing my lead. So now I want to grab this, right? I got the gold here, and now I get this 600 gold. And like, how does enemy team ever get back? How do they get back in the game? If I die and I look for kills, they can get back in the game. Garen is bot, all right. I might not even have to use the Herald, but I think I will, because Garen is bot, Corky is bot, Jin is, <gasps> Jin is dead. So I'm gonna put the Herald here. We're still doing this per minute. We're still being very productive. All right, we're gonna get this. Now, I probably don't wanna take the inhib here, because that will give them, uh, what's it called? An opportunity to start farming topside waves. But we're also stomping that hard that it might actually be okay here. There's four people both side. Jin could come here. Jin just respawns. So I'm gonna Q delay. Predicting that Jin might come top here. Alright, it's Leona. This Herald is still alive. If you guys don't know, if a Herald charges into a Nexus turret, it will actually one-shot it if you auto-attack it once. So if this Herald actually reaches there, I just auto-attack this once. And look at this. This this will die. Alright. I mean I'm just ending the game, I guess. Because enemies all bolt. Yeah, that's 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 League of Legends, I guess. Well, I guess taking that Herald was one of the best decisions I could have done. Nobody named to respect it, and then now I just end the game. Then now just end the game, I guess. Alrighties. Type one in chat if you learn something new.
Type 1 in chat if you learned something new. Okay, Doki. We are pretty much last pick. We have an 80 jungler. Uh, this, if, I, if I'm in this position and I will ban a champion, Rannington Malphite. Those are the type of brands. Or maybe Poppy. Poppy's also really good. What do you think about Solar Baka? Absolutely insane gangbuck player. I think the biggest thing where, uh, what I respect uh, with Solar Baka so much is that I don't know any other gangbuck main that is so good as him. Like, if, if you look at River mains, Viper is extremely good. Uh, General Sniper is extremely good. Build is really good. I'm up there, Wen Shen is really good, Azi is really good, but when you look at GP, who else is close to the skill on GP that that Solar Baka has? Like, who else is there? So that's why I really respect Solar Baka. He's so incredibly good. Yo, I'm trying to start the top because I like the champs more. Should I just watch our YouTube videos to climb? Yes, that would be a great way to start uh, increasing your knowledge. And if you want to greatly increase your knowledge quickly, Compi, I highly recommend checking out my course as well. Uh, there's free videos on my course as well. If you like the style, you can end up getting the full course, but if you type exclamation mark course, you get directed to my course. You can check like on each course a preview video, and then if you like the style, you can try and get it completely. What mythic do you guys think that I will take this game? What mythic do you guys think I'll take? I'll take the nasty heal, because I cannot dodge VQ, it stuns me after, Jax E, this and this. Undodgeable CC, I go to Nasty. What mythic do you guys take? I'm going this game. Everybody said Gore Drinker. Correct! Why do we go Gore Drinker? Burst heavy, burst heavy. So we need Gore Drinker in order to survive this game. If I go Hydra and Vi is like, you know what, I want to gun down this Riven, she will! She will! I need HP. I need HP here. Plus, melee champion, melee champion, melee champion, melee champion. So it's also really good here. So this is a forced Gore Drinker game. Now, after Gore Drinker, we can pivot. We can go Cleaver, probably Cleaver, because after Gore Drinker, you need armor penetration, right? This guy can build a lot of armor, this guy can build a lot of armor, this guy can build a lot of armor. So, I'm probably gonna go Cleaver second, and then after Cleaver, I'm probably gonna go Death Sense. Why? Because this is AP damage, this is AP damage, but it's not that much AP damage, right? This is 80, 80, 80. So, probably Gore Drinker, Cleaver, Death Sense is game. Uh, only it plays, yes. It's it's a uh, jungle diff and matchup diff. Alright. So, this Jax is playing... Again, chat, as always, as always, as always, first far waves. Vi jungle, Rango jungler. So many dashes. Thank you for gifting Reason to me, bro. Extremely generous. Small, Thank you so easy. much for the subscriptions. I appreciate it greatly. So let's see here. They have a Vi in the early game. I have a Rango in the early game. I would say Vi stronger. Anybody plays my Jax against already. Riven is very... Like, we're both strong in the early game, but he's playing Resolve Lethal Tempo, but he does not have Ignite, right? So, it is an aggressive Reason setup, Lethal Tempo Resolve, to but it does have Teleport. What do I do with the camera option? I put it to per side Offset. If you have Locked, you see when I press Space, it locks in the center. If I have per side Offset and I press Space, it puts it here. This is just what I'm used to. I, I like this more, so this is what I'm used to. Instead of going into the center, I have it here, and I like this more as a setting. Alright, so, if the Jax doesn't go here in the wave level 1, I want to look for priority. Okay, it looks like both Jarns are passing at the top this game. He doesn't have a potion. Always scout your opponent's items in the early game and that's right put to put him in an annoying position. Now, now, now I'm just mentally in his head. Alright, so now he's scared. You know, he's like, oh, I have no potion. Yeah, run away. So now I get the priority. Why chat? Level up timers, alright? So now I actually only need this melee main. I don't need this caster to die to get my level 2. I, oh, his E is in the back yet. I know the cooldowns too well. Also, this minion will give me my level 2. So I'm not too scared here. But please die. <laughs> you know what Jax did though? You know what Jax should have done? You know what Jax should have done, chat? Jax should have instant reset TP back. If Jax reset and TP back, he would have been in a good position, but he hard pushed. So he didn't have the fundamental knowledge here. So we're still actually completely fine. We're still completely fine, but yes, he had so much damage on his E because of the main aggro, so like his E, I guess, just one shot me, I guess. It's okay. Now we learn how to play from behind, chat. Hey, time one in chat if you want to learn how to play from behind. One in chat if you want to learn how to play from behind, it's okay. We pivot. We pivot. Don't lose this, though. I don't want to play anymore. So here, I'm going to hold this wave outside of the turret range. Why, you might ask? To slow down the bounce. A very big thing. If I went for this casters, these melees would have ran into the turret range. But by me holding the wave outside of the turret range, I will guarantee the Jaxumus to lose some means here extra. Very small detail, but still a good fundamental trick to utilize. He has no flash. He might lose another melee, which would be amazing. Any XP I can cancel off of here is a big win for me. 
Nice! He lost one more melee. Alright, so now I'm gonna slow push this wave. Vi is most likely going to go into bot side here because she full crit into top. 16 camps, she does 1, 2, 3, 4 camps, and Ranger took care of her red buff. So there's Vi's two options go into bot side for Scuttle and go for her spawning camps, or she goes for Golem's top side. I'm level 4, so I can look for a small trade. He doesn't have any potions. He went for uh, a. Um, he has Sheen and a uh, Ward, right? But he still does have his DP though. Pushed a little bit too fast here, but I don't think Vi's coming into top side. So I, th I guess Vi's bot side right now. We just hit level 4 both, but he has no potions. I do. So I want to do W, auto, EQ out. That's the trade pattern you want to do against Jax. And here, it's still a beneficial trade for me. And now I do my Q into his face. Every damage I do onto him is good, because he has no potions I do. He wants to fight me here. I have 12 Conqueror stacks. I'm going to have my level 5 here, I believe, from this. And he has no E. My Q cooldown will come back up before his E. So what I can do here is probably kill him. He's gonna get level 5 very soon as well. So I gotta be wary of his level up timer here. Alright, he's gonna get level 5 here. He's no E now. 1 for 1 trade is worth it for me. I, I, I double, double, double cast at the turret. He's gonna reset NTP. Okay, let's push. Alright, chat. Now, I'm gonna get a whip. I could also go for Deep Blade Double Longsword, but I'm gonna go for a whip. Why? Because we want the Gore Drinker, chat, so it's a whip angle here. Again, look how this Jax did not buy any potions. Potions in the early game are extremely broken. You know why? A health potion gives 120 HP over time, right? You know how much HP a Ruby Crystal gives? Let's check, right? I think it's 150? 150. So, one potion is almost equivalent to a Ruby Crystal. So, right now, we're kind of as equal HP, right? If I do an equal health shield with him, but I have two potions, I'll have 240 HP extra. So this is a really good thing. One thing I have to keep in mind, though, is that the plant spawn timer is six minutes. You know what that means? Jax will have tempo into this river first, because he's pushing the wave towards me. Also, Vi stops out again, so I'm not going to be contesting this wave too hard, because first of all, if I trade right here, Jax can just go into the river and collect the plant, right? So if I trade right here and I lose half my HP, he lose half his HP, he can just go to the river and get the plant, if he is smart. So there's no point and trading for me for that, plus his jungler stops so I don't want to trade. I do want to keep this wave right here though, because this is what I refer to as the happy spot. And this is the happy spot because now I am not gankable, but the Rengar is like, or but the Jax is extremely gankable. Plus, he's forced to walk up for last hits. So while he's forced to walk up for last hits, I can always just use all my abilities like him on him like this. And look, he can't do anything because I'm this close to my turret, right? So this is why I refer to as the happy spot. If you can hold the wave here against any melee bruiser, it always guarantees them to pretty much die. And now he wants to recall. Poor little fellow. I want to keep holding the wave here though. Because this is much more valuable for me. So I'm going to drag these minions up more a little bit. Why? Because now I can preserve this here. And now his minions comes a bit closer too. And now it's in a beautiful position to keep slow pushing towards me. Beautiful. Any fundamentals in the chat? Any fundamentals in the chat? We're getting Flesh Ignite back. So remember how we were behind. But now randomly, we're good again. Any GG's? Now let's get my level 7 from these two melees and we can look for an all-in. He used E. He used Q. Wave still slow pushing towards me. Jax is forced to walk up for last hits. He has no bone painting. Still gonna force this guy to walk up for last hits. I'm getting all my cooldowns back, but my Q, to Q cooldown refreshes faster than his E. So what I can do right here is if he walks up, I would just full one shot him. Okay, he has E again. I have no idea where Vi is at, but I know Rengar is both sides, so I could be weak side. I have no idea where Vi is at, so let's play safe again. But am I gankable? No! Why? Happy spot. I'm gonna ward here. Why? I'm only scared of lane ganks. Vi can gank me from her bot side. She cannot gank me from here. She can only gank me from lane. So you see, I'm keeping the wave in the happy spot. How can Jax play? How can play? Happy spot abusers. Use this spot. Especially against melee bruisers. Vi is bot. Alright, chat. That's all I needed. I'm gonna proxy here to give myself extra tempo. Now my way's walking to the turret. Get one plate. I'm gonna only get the wave and recall. I don't gonna stay for the plate. It kills my tempo. I don't even need this caster. I don't want it. It's ugly. 
We got a recoil instantly. We have a Gore Drinker. We got exactly the amount of gold. Also, Jax will not have enough time to push this wave and this wave, so we can do the happy spot again. Any happy spot enjoyers? Any happy spot enjoyers? Yeah. J -j -j. So now, as you guys can see, Jax does not have enough time to push this wave and this wave before I'm back, because I understand tempo so well. Yes, I do coaching flat button. If you're interested in coaching, type estimation right Discord. You find the link to my Discord server, send me a DM, and we can spot the coaching session. All right, so you see the wave slow push towards me again. We can freeze the wave here again in this happy spot. Jax is forced to walk up for last hits. Again, no sustain. JJ. Vines double six though, so we gotta keep that in mind. Only do that like that. Q, W, auto. Okay, Vines both side. I have the item lead. I'm gonna try. And do a thing here, okay, chat? So I'm gonna Q delay, watch this. I'm gonna Q delay, this Jax is dead. He's already dead, he doesn't know yet. What I'm gonna do is Q delay all the way, and then I'm gonna EQ towards him. But now he's like, oh, Riven no Q, lol, let's fight, let's jump on her. But I Q delayed, hee hee, hee hee. And he's dead, did I not say it? It works every time. People in, this, this Jax is Emerald, by the way. He still doesn't know how Q delay works on Riven. I did my first Q delay, I told you guys, this guy's dead. How? How does it work? How does he know? Because people don't understand how Riven 2 could not work. Use your Q delay, get your free kills. GG? Any GG's? Get this blade. He probably has TP. So I gotta be a little careful here. I'm gonna get this blade, hard push next wave, and then we recall again. I'm gonna use my cooldowns, mostly for the wave. Alright, I get the blade. Do the same thing, hard push this wave. Now, I could go Tabis this game. Tabis is really good because this guy is going lethality, right? And Jax is going to fine. But if I go Tabis, I don't get 50 cooldown. Now the biggest benefit from buying CDR boots here is that I was being I will start being able to chain my Qs. Let me explain. Imagine Alois on top penetrates her happy spot. I lost. Thank you for the one dollar donation. I appreciate it. So let, let's take a look at how Q delay works, okay? I lost too. So right now, when I have 50 ability haste, I can start my Q1 like this. Q2 all the way, let it extend all the way. And now when I Q3, look. My Q is already back. That's how Q delay works. So right now, what we do on Jaximus's face? <laughs> I can reveal got, got an ad, GG. So now I'm going to permanently Q delay in this guy's face. So Q delay like this, and I want him to walk up for last hits. And now I EQ in his face, W auto instantly Q back. And now I'll chase him. He's gonna flash. See, the R boots are kind of broken on Riven. You couldn't do that with Tabis, chat. You could not do that with Tabis. Any confirmers? Any confirmers? Any confirmers about Q layers? Any Q layers in chat? G -G. All right, Shen is helping me proxy. Let's go, Shen. You're him. Jax STP, so we recall. <clears throat> no, I can't cancel one auto there. I did cancel one auto. Now we go Cleaver next. Why he's going Tabis, right? It's better to get the HP here. After Cleaver, we go Death Stance and nobody can kill me anymore. We never really go Gordrick or Hydra unless enemy team builds zero armor. Actually, they're not really building armor, huh? This guy won't build armor. This guy won't build armor. This guy's not building armor. This guy's not building armor. Only this guy. So Gordrick or Hydra is not bad here because I'm snowballing. But Gordrick and Cleaver is still more consistent. Every time right now, I'm Q delay, okay? This is all I do from now on. 60 ability has watched this. I'm just going to Q delay. Watch this. Look. Q delay, Q delay, E all 3 Q. All right, Q delay again. We do it, we repeat this every time. It will work eventually. Q delay again, he goes for the last hit, and Q delay again. How can Jax play, by the way? Q is delayed again, by the way. How can play when enemy can Q delay? How can play when enemy can kill the lane? Mm, how can play? Remember when I started this game 0 1? Anybody remembers? GG. 1 and 5 now. So now, chat, what is enemy win condition? Alright, they're bot lane. My bot lane is 0 and 3. Is killing this Jax going to turn this outcome of this game? Is, going, is it going to change the outcome of this game? Now! But I want 1600 gold. Then I get Cleaver. And now I will start expanding my lead. How do I expand my lead? Similar to the second game we played and the third game we played. We gain tempo on top side right now. And now we're gonna expand our lead across the rest of the map. How do we do that? We wanna get tempo on top side. I first wanna get 1600 gold so I get my Cleaver. And now I will start roaming towards that bot side.
I have my cleaver now. I can recall. Okay, their bowman actually died. Well, well done to my team. Then we don't have to do much now. Alright, so where do we go, chat? We could go to dragon. We could go to bot lane We don't have to really go here again. Killing this dragon doesn't change out of this game. So, yes, right now. They're, they're fine, brother. They're, they're completely fine. Alright, so we can play for this mid tier one. Galio is 1 and 0. Their bot lane is still relatively strong. We're going for dragon. I'm just going to go over here. I'm going to push up mid wave. Why? So just to go for my team as well. Now we have mid lane prior, I'm gonna move here. Enemy mid lane is forced to collect. I'm gonna still look to get a shot down their team here. There we go, we are here. We're in the fight. This will be good for us. Ignite for movement speed. Alright, shot down their bot lane, shot down enemy jungler, got all their flashes, and we're gonna get the bot lane turret as well. So, how does enemy team play? I just um, went away from top lane, and uh, I expanded my lead across the rest of the map by creating tempo on top side. I don't even care now, I'm losing waves. Jack can play. How are we feeling? Now we got bot tier 1. We're gonna get bot tier 2 almost. They are salts, Capitan. Just trying to, I'm cute lane chat. Look at the cute lane. 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 Oh, what? She can jump? Cute lane again, though. Why do I get feared that way? Cute lane still. Alright, we got a cute lane again, but we don't have ult. So let's not take any risk here. I have one k shut down. I have enough gold in base. Let's just recall. They're four man bot. They used a lot. Last recall, stay disciplined. That's another very big thing. And I'm just gonna build this. I built a chain vest here because ultimately, this is another golden rule that I have in League of Legends, okay? I have a golden rule. Listen. If you are ahead in the game, we are ahead, we are currently ahead. Building defense is offense. You know why? I have more than enough damage to kill my opponents. But if they cannot kill me anymore, how do they deal with me? Any chores? So, I have enough damage to kill them, but if I build defensive right now, at this point in the game, they cannot kill me anymore. So how do they deal with me? If you reverse this, if you're behind, you should always build full, uh, full aggressive, because if you build defensive when you're behind, they're still gonna one-shot you anyways, right? There you go. We're gonna get the tier to turret here, because it's 600 gold, but we don't want to lose our 1k shutdown, so let's keep Vi in mind. Vi is probably the, the, the trickiest thing for me to deal with. So I'm gonna keep Vi in mind. Vi is top. Alright, I'm not scared anymore. I'm cute laying. Yeah. All right, now we're gonna do double cast on this guy's face. That was a good flash by Tristana. And uh, now we get a tier two turret as well. And uh, I didn't even play that that well mechanically. I'm just really strong. And uh, I'm just permanently cute laying. That's it. And um, now we're shooting. So now we're gonna have death dance, and um, now it's kinda GG. Uh, I don't think my team was playing that well this game. I just shut down their bot lane, that was our only weak addition. Galio was also shut down now. This guy was 2 0, my bot lane was 0 3, right? Now in a really good position. Now we built this, we're gonna build a little bit of magic resist. Who in enemy team can kill me now? Who? Who can kill me? Nobody can kill me. So, now all we need to do is just close out this game cleanly. And we do that with the Herald. Herald is our next step. Herald will secure us to pretty much break open their base. And now we should do. I just hit Plat thanks to your stream started winning lane almost every time. Let's go, brother. Well done. Alright, let's get this. Yeah, I also turn chat off, by the way. I wanna get this. It's okay that he takes it. Let's just literally end the game with this, by the way. <laughs> yes, Riven mid is playable. So right now, chat, it's 90 minutes in the game. Breaking open in hips right now is fine. Why? Because Nasher spawns at minute 20, right? Nasher is the most consistent way to close out any game. So it's completely fine for me to look to break open the hips right now. Mainly because we're gonna be able to utilize that tempo to, to, to get Nasher as well. 
I, probably the best in it for me to loot to take down is a bot side, but I'm already in top side, so it's better for me to just loot as my tempo here and play for top instantly. They can't really stop me. I think I can unironically almost 5v1 because of my items and because of how strong I am. So now we're just in a really good position. My teammates died. It's okay. Stacking my Conqueror, I got 10 stacks. In theory, I only need to hit this, this turret once, by the way. That was fun. Wait. <laughs> Thank you, Herald. Salute to the Herald. Oh, shit. Nicht gut. Shaco got the 1k turret. Sh Shaco gold. Very good. Ga, ga, good. Get. Wahnsinnig gut. GG. Now let's close out the game, though. Now let's close out the game. So, the next objective is going to be Baron Nashoras. Let's get this, and then we close out the game. Where do I know German from? I had German in school for five, six years. Can I speak German? No. I do actually understand that pretty well, because I also lived in Germany. Because when I played in um, SK Gaming, uh, I, was in Ger I was living in Germany, right? So that's where I learned my German. Mm. Yeah, let's do it. Me and the bro. I should tank, so the vein does more damage to Nash. The Rengar will probably come as well. I guess I'll just do it. Enemy team is all five here, so we should be fine here. We gate as dear. Mir gates good. Danke, Bruder. There you go. That's the best German I got. But yeah, you don't want to hear my German. Yamato always says me my accent is so shit. Yamato is the rarest. To, just told me every time in Korea to not speak German, so. I just speak it on stream. GG. They're bullies. Can you play ERLs remotely? Yeah, it depends on the team you play. <coughs> Thought on Jack's skin rework? What skin got reworked? Thank you for the 100 bits as well, by the way. What well, skin got reworked? Um, I think, yeah, what I do is I just stay top. Actually, no, I flash. I'm close to level 16, though. Alright, let's just close out the game. There's also top wave. Let's focus here for a second. Look at Tanky I am because of this build. Okay, we got level 16. But the Shaco boxes are giving me mentals in game arrow. Do we end? Kinda wanna go for like a highlight little play. Okay, GG. Let's go! We started 0-1. We also learned a bit how to play from behind because I can't like read my game level 3, but it's okay. We came back. GG. This probably went better. Yeah, so we had Orange, GP, Camille, Gwen, Sion. And I, I, I kind of played a little bit of everything, you know? Kind of played a little bit of everything. All right, Darius matchup. Why wow, you played ranked professional? Ranked was one of my best champions. Rankton is one of my best champions. If I'm gonna do unranked to master, Rankton only, it's gonna be really, really easy for me to get to masters. I think Rankton is arguably the strongest top player right now. So, uh, yeah, keep that in mind. Uh, I'd still highly recommend ranked them, but we already did a ranked and guide, so um, I'm doing Riven now. And then we're gonna go to Atrox and um, Garen. And then after that, we have to. Uh, I'll see. I'm also not sure who I do first yet, but uh, we're gonna need like one or two weeks every time to do one champion, right? One or two weeks per champion. And then we just go from there. Alright, let's go to the next game. Um, Alrighties. Finally, in the first Diamond player, we play against a. Emerald 2, Darius, he's playing with Ghost, Flash, very standard setup, but he has Resolve second instead of Nimbus, so he doesn't play, um, or Sorcery, so he doesn't have Nimbus. They have a Diana in the early game, I have a Kha'Zix in the early game, both are kind of weak in the early game. Uh, oh, sorry, this guy's Diamond, not the so my bad. No, Darius actually wins level 1 against Riven, and it is due to his passive. If Darius stacks his passive 5 times onto you, he basically gets full build and he one shots you with 2 auto attacks. So, uh, Darius can zone Riven. Riven cannot zone a Darius. In this matchup, you're able to, to go two different starting items. You can go for D-Blade start, you can go for Longsword start. I personally prefer the Longsword start as it allows me to look for some traits. As in this matchup, I want to look for small traits instead of all in the early game, right? I have more burst, I prefer small traits, 
he prefers extended fights, right? So I gotta use my burst and my small traits. He wants all ins. Yes, Doran's Blade buff will change my start. I will probably play Doran's Blade every game. Now, as I was saying, one thing I need to be really careful for Darius in the early game is, of course, his passive. And he's playing with Flesh Ghost. So when you want to get a ward down against a Darius, you always have to be extremely wary of where he's at. If he's in this bush, for example, he could run me down. So what I do against Darius, I just place the ward right here. I'm not gonna go any deeper. I saw the Darius, his D Blade start, okay? Uh, and like I said, uh, or I didn't say this. Uh, but it's uh, really good to highlight as well. If I leave base at 15 seconds and I walk here instantly like this, so this is the line you, of path you follow, you walk through here, and then you get here, and then you step a little bit outside of the bush, you're always able to scout if Darius goes into the bush or not. So here we clearly saw that Darius was not in the bush, and that allows us to just go there first. I don't know, this guy is completely griefing. Think you can beat a Yasuo level 1 with Lethal Tempo? Ignite. I mean, he's gonna die. So this Kha'Zix dies and then pings his team. Classic. So okay, we mute him instantly. Okay, so here, let's see what the Darius is going to do, right? We lose the level 1. He is not starting in lane. That allows me to get my priority here. Tino, thank you for your prime. So, listen chat. Even though Darius is a bad matchup for me, right? Because he isn't at the lane level 1, I can get priority. And remember, if you get your level 2 first, a losing matchup becomes a winning matchup simply because I'm a level up. Okay, his Q start, so it's also a little bit more safe. And it looks like Diana started the Raptors on my Kha'Zix. I like this trade. Why? He has D-Blade 1 potion. I have Longshot 3. Oh, shit. He's I don't like that. My bad. Remember chat, 1 million for my level 2. I'm gonna step backwards to try and bait Darius to go for this last hit. Right? Level up timers. What have I told you? Does this level of timer streak work until masters consistently because people don't look at level up timers? Use this. That one little trick. One trick. Priority and level up timers, and I've won my lane. Are you convinced? I'm telling you, I get solo kills up until masters using that one little trick right there. Now I'm gonna do a slow push in the hope that Darius walks up. If he goes for one of these last hits, I'm gonna all in, not to kill him, but to try and get him to even lower HP so I could potentially dive, but he didn't get a step up too far, so now we just do a third wave crash, it's all good. And I'm gonna continue lighting here, because Diana is going to path into bot, and Kha'Zix is pathing into bot as well. So with both jungles pathing into bot, this is okay. One thing I have to keep in mind here is that he gets level 4 first, because these melees are dying, right? And he only needs these two melees plus one cast to get his level 4 already. So I'm gonna try and thin it out here as much as I can, to try and at least match it a little bit. But he gets his level 4 from this caster. How do I know? Because I'm a level up timer connoisseur. GG. No level up timers yet. It's like knowing your recipe or how to cook. So there we go. Waves bouncing into me. I have one potion advantage. So what I can do against Darius actually is Q to lay all the way. He loses Q. And I'm gonna EQ for it, guys. Bone play thing. And if I fight him here, I actually win. Because I get my Q again. So even though I did full Q lay here in the early game, it actually still worked for me. He flashed. The wave's pushing into me. All good. He's running out of mana. Wave's still pushing into me. I have two options. I can recall or I can look to slow push into hard push. I think recalling here is the best option because the next wave is a cannon wave. I'm going to ward this push to see if he walks up or not. Wave's still pushing into me. I can recall. The only issue is I don't have the best recall gold. I think it's just deep blade refillable for 600 gold. But the wave's in a beautiful position so it still ends up being worth it. Darius has missed the full cannon wave whilst recalling there. But the full cannon wave is still existing for me. So obviously this was a very good situation. Yes, I will do a Fiora on rank 2 masters as well. I will literally do every champion on rank 2 masters. It's just going to take some time and we're gonna prioritize certain champions, right? Okay, so he bought dagger refillable pink wards. Very interesting pink, uh, p like, you should go like boots or cloth armor, right? Alright, so right now this guy's still gonna be level 4, but I'm almost going to be level 5 already. He has no flesh, I do. Beautiful. Uh, to be fair, I lost a little bit too much HP there. Uh, Diana has been spotted with 28 CS. So what this Diana has most likely done is full cleared and reset and she's topside right now. So I gotta be a little bit wary for the Diana. So what I wanna do is hard push this wave to make it bounce back into me. I will get the level 6 before the Darius. I can get his pink ward right here that he returned with. And then on the bounce, I'll have my ignite. I'll get my level 6. He has no flash. And then I will look to kill the Darius. But right now, I kind of have to worry about Diana as I have no idea where she's currently at. Okay, this guy's kind of freezing the wave. That's okay. I think three minutes for level six here. Let's see if we can prep that. Ah! 
I get level 6, but I have no cooldown, so of course I can't punish. Oh, we're gonna prioritize this. I think I can dive here. Alright, don't do what I just did. I got hit by his Q, I didn't flash that. Um, yeah, I gotta practice this more. I'm still really shit at diving, honestly. I think that was actually a free dive, but I just misplayed it completely. And uh, it was kill mentality as well, because if I just went to proxy next wave and get uh, and proxy dead and recalled, I would be in a really, really, really good situation. Because ultimately, right there, Darius was stuck on the turret, right, without flash. If I proxied next wave, I would have enough gold for my pickaxe, I'd recall and I would kill him on the bounce right here with my flash and my ult. Instead, I look for a kill. The, the, the thing that is okay, though, is that I die on my timer. So, I pushed in the wave, and I died, whilst I, I, like, I'm losing nothing, you know? So even though I died, it's not actually that bad, as I died on my own timer after I crashed the wave, right? Let's say I would die um, when, uh, what's it called? When uh, he's pushing wave into me, let's say I walk up to him right now and I die, then I would die on his timer, right? Because I would lose out on the waves, I would lose out on the plates, so that would be really bad. So right now I'm just gonna play reserved, and we're actually still fine. But the kill is still really bad, right? It's, of course, not good, it's still really bad, but it's okay. But keep that in mind that if you want to go for a riskier play, it's better to do it on your timer than on his timer. I think if he actually flashed onto me there, I might be dead. It's okay, let's just get this crash and, and yeah. We're gonna have to wait for our ult before we can play aggressive again. Alright. Which is shit. He's level 7. Ooh. Nice spacing by him. Diana's bolt. Dude, well. Thank you for your prime. Appreciate it, brother. All right, we got our ult. Diana's still bolt. So I can look to fight him right now. The way I'd want to approach it is full Q lay. So I'm gonna Q lay just to, to just to prep it. And then if Doris walks up into my Q3, then I can all in in theory. I don't know where the Doris at though. Is he like hiding in the bush waiting for me to use my cooldowns? So I'm only gonna use my Qs. No, I don't know what he's doing. He's playing really safe. I don't want to recall because I don't have my pickaxe, unfortunately. <laughs> he has bone plating, so... What I can do, for example, is I'm, I'm very close to level 8, right? I'm gonna full kill lay, and I wanna Q3 on top of him like that and try and get his bone plating, but he stepped it. It's okay. Closer. Diana could be coming top side. Get this. Okay, we got a sums. Not the not the worst. I mean, in terms of that, we're still in a completely fine spot. Uh, we could recall the wave is bouncing into me, but I think I just want to hyper push this. Best to focus the cast is fastest way to hyper push a wave. My jumper is doing this, but it's a little bit scary. I'm just recalling. If he dies here. Enemy mid has prio, I have no idea where Diana's at, I'm not helping him out. He has no flash, no ult, like, I can't help him. I have no flash, no ult either. Okay, Diana's on dragon, he flipped it. Oh, looks like Yasuo stopped him. Okay, I think my team is very tilted. Um, Darius flashed at 8.46, so I'm gonna add 5 minutes to that, so it's gonna be like 13.40 top. Alright, I have that timer, let's keep that timer. And right now... I don't have my ult, my flash, but I have both in one minute. So I want to try and prep a kill in one minute-ish. Um, not sure where Diana's gonna go. They got the Herald, unfortunately. And um, my goal here is to try and slow push this wave, allow this next wave to walk through the lane, and then hard push this. And then, okay, Diana's still both sides. She hasn't recalled, actually. Interesting. Okay, he doesn't have Tabis yet. That's good. I think I proxy next wave. The reason I proxy is because I don't have kill pressure without my ult anyways. And I'm assuming Diana wants to come topside. Alright, now we can roam here. Yasuo still hasn't recalled, I'm gonna ward right here. See what the Diana does. If Yasuo comes to- Okay, Diana- She also actually died. Okay. Now I have ult, now I have flash on this next wave I can play aggressive. I also have deep vision now, everything is prepped. Darius has no flash, now we can finally Hello, look for a kill. Paradoxally, good to see you brother, thank you for the gifted sub. Okay, we see the Diana, that's our deep ward. Uh oh. 
I messed up my cooldowns. He has three stacks already. Oh, I didn't let it. I didn't let it run out. I tried to let it run out and then fight him, but I miscalculated. So now I'm in a little bit of an awkward scenario. I tried to let it like run out and then fight him, but I failed. I need my ignite now to kill him, but I'm very scared of the Diana. He's running out of mana though. So if you want to fight a Darius or a Jax, Hello, what you want to very often do is Q delay, okay? So I'm going to start my Q delay right here. Now I'm hoping Diana isn't here. It's kind of flippy. Oh, my Q ran out. Unlucky. Well, maybe it's for the better. I have no idea where Diana is at still. Okay, one more time. I'm going to start my Q delay. Okay, Diana. Oh, no, it's not Diana. And now I will E ult 3Q into him. And then my Q comes back. And that's how you get kills on Riven. Q delay is the best way to get kills. So I literally Q delay into him, right? To close the gap, stack some Conqueror already, and then my Q comes up back in time, before he can kill me. I can utilize my W to cancel one of his auto attacks, so he also doesn't get 5 stacks, and then I can finish it off. Now, I'm kind of flipping it here. I have no idea where Diana's at, but she was topside like 1.5 minutes ago. So I'm assuming she's both side right now, somewhere. If she's topside, I, then I guess I just die, but I lose nothing for it, so it's okay. Okay, she's mid. Alright. If I get this and sell refillable, I'm gonna be very close to CDR boots as well. That is 55 ability haste. That is the biggest stack I can, or the biggest spike that I can get right there. So now I just go. I hope they don't find me here. Lovely. And like I said, now I also get CDR boots. So now I am at my strongest spike. Now, of course, this was a little bit more. Uh, how would I say this? A advanced. As in, I was calculating my gold. I was kind of flipping that if Diana has top, it's okay. Because they wouldn't have any wave to play off. So they wouldn't get too many plates either. I didn't have a shutdown. So even if I die, I wouldn't be too bad. And now I have, I'm back with all my item spikes. This was the Darius Flash Timer. So this is an ult or flash for 30 seconds. But I also don't have my ult for 30 seconds. So unfortunately, I cannot look for another kill. But it's okay. We have gotten back in the game. We have our one kill now. We're still very farmed. So even though we didn't really get too many kills this game, we still have very good CS just because of playing good fundamentally. Kha'Zix is bot. This guy is playing very safe. So I assume Diana isn't here. There's a dragon in bot. Yas was walking into bot. So my team has stabilized the game very well. Okay. Somebody took the scuttle not too long ago. Diana's there. She's built a full item. Yasuo is getting close to two items, so the Yasuo is really fast this game, even though it's two and three, because it's very farm. Diana is pretty strong, the rest isn't too strong. Okay, they actually died. My team is playing amazing. Alright, this guy's flesh again. Oh, it's just a little bit of spacing onto him. He has no E. Okay, but still can't really pressure onto him much, just because of his passive. Mm, I could have been there. Maybe it was better to be there for my team. Darius has two choices. He can either look to hard push or he can look to slow push. He has no idea what I'm doing. So what I'm gonna do right here is try this, try to act as if I've recalled, right? This guy should have known for sure. I'm gonna slow push or a cute light rather. Looks like this guy has no intention of walking up, so then we just hard push. I wanna get this turret, but it's hard to get it under his nose. Looks like he recalled though. Alright, uh, yeah, I could have been at the dragon like I was saying, but it's not the end of the world. Getting this top tier 1 is very beautiful. And then, where am I gonna go next, chat? Where should I open up next? Where would you open up next? You said bot lane, you have smurfing. I'm gonna go bot lane right now. My bot lane should go to mid, Akali should go to top, and the game is beautiful. Uh, I can pivot for a lot of items, it's probably gonna be clear for a second, but this goes into everything. So, I'm gonna pick my bot lane away, I'm gonna tell him to just go mid. They should listen. This bot wave is kind of shitty for me though. I'm assuming enemy team is going to play for Herald. Maybe they said one person bot, but I can move you on this guy, I can move you on this guy. So if they're going to play for Herald and use their tempo there, as you can see, Kaelin is mid, Akali should probably go top. I can just get bot lane here and get the tier 1. I could also look for 5v5s, but I prefer playing into the side and in these kind of scenarios in the game. 5v5 would not be a bad idea either though. Okay, Yasuo is, he actually has two items. So I can still win even if he has two items if I Q lane. So if I Q delay like this, and then jump onto him like this, you see my Q is instantly back. So that's how I still win. But that's all mechanics. Now, you might be wondering, how did you do so much damage? If you Q delay on top of him, right, and then E ult Q3, I instantly get 6 Conqueror stacks by the time I'm on top of him. And then my Q comes back up. 
So I get six Conqueror stacks. I'm already on top of him with my ult. And then I Q, auto, Q, auto, Q, auto with insta 12 Conqueror stacks. So that's how I can one-shot him. Even though he has two items there, I completely one-shot him. So that's why Riven is one of the best side lane champions with this build, right? You just need 65 haste. That's why I go CDR boots in most of my games as well. Without CDR boots, that would never be a kill. So yeah, Riven and ability haste. Maybe better classic. My team all died somewhere. Okay, I don't need to chase. It's a fat wave here. I need 2k gold. I can sell this for 180. Because now I can sell d I have full cleaver. So now after cleaver... My wall up, I'm Yo, Cometa, thank you for 10 months, bro. Our voice and business. Okay, so now we have two items. What is my next item going to be, chat? What mythic would you get the skin? To be fair, no mythic is bad. Gore Drinker isn't bad this game because they have burst, burst, right? Eclipse isn't bad because of armor here, armor here. They might go more armor, but I do already have cleaver. And Dustblade isn't too bad either because no armor, no armor yet, no armor. So, like, you can kind of go all three, legit. It's, it's just, like, right here, if I want to decide on my mythic... And this is a thing that is very important in League of Legends as well. Chelsea you, thank you for nine months, brother. What is very important to try and kind of figure out here is how is enemy team going to be itemizing going further into this game? So this is a very important thing, like what will enemy team be building? So here I see this guy is a Kindle gem. Now the Kindle gem can go two different ways, as in, let's let's find it so I can show you guys. You guys. He can go for, uh, what's it called? Juxo, right? Actually, he's probably gonna go for Juxo for sure with the Kindle Gem. So, keeping the, the fact in mind that this guy is a Kindle Gem, I'm gonna go Eclipse this game. So, this is a thing that you learn through experience for playing in the game, but if you want to learn how to itemize yourself, ultimately, you're gonna have to look at enemy team, their items, and what they're going to be building in the future to make appropriate choices, right? So, here, because I know this guy's gonna go Juxo, that's why I'm gonna go Eclipse here. Does that make sense, chat? Does that make sense? So here, if I go Gore Drinker, I legit won't do damage later on into this guy. This guy's Tabis and this, this guy's Tabis. So yeah, I actually need to Eclipse this game. And that is only because I know how enemy teams are most likely going to be building with this item. See? He's going Jack Show. So again, if you want to learn how to itemize appropriately against enemy team comp, don't only look at the items that they're building right now, but also look at the items that they're going to be building in the future. And that's the best way to utilize like your knowledge to try and go for what item you need. So here, I can't go Gore Drinker because of Tabi's this armor here, armor, armor, armor here, right? I need armor penetration, else I won't do damage later on. Dustblade isn't the best because it gives me ability haste and movement speed for a mythic passive, but Eclipse, if we read Eclipse right here, right, you actually get armor penetration for every legendary item that you finish, so that's why I go for Eclipse this game. Also, whilst my team does this dragon, I mean, I can kind of move, but I don't think it's a good teamfight for us, so I'm going to ping them away, and I'm going to get the tier 2 turret here, and guarantee myself 600 gold. Okay, now let's focus on the game, because this game is actually very close. Alright, we're very close to Mythic now. Alright, we need Eclipse soon. And then after Eclipse, I hope it have a carry after all this split. Yes sir, don't worry about it. Pudelay. He's gonna eat through me. Beautiful. We have Eclipse in base right now, but I don't want to instantly recall. I can get this wave too. Maybe we can get a Cloth Armor and then we'll recall. Now, Darius looks to be basing. My team is going to be pressuring mid. So we have tempo on the map right now because Darius is dead. If I recall, I lose that tempo. But with the Yasuo being dead right instead of Darius, I can try and utilize that tempo to maybe pressure the side wave. So now I've pressured out the side wave. Ooh, there's a little bit of a Diana angle as well. I'm picking my way. I don't think we should be chasing here. I don't know. We're still completely out of numbers. Uh, the only thing that I wanted to say is we can get tempo on side wave to get the mid tier one third. 
that's what, what what I wanted to do. My teammates died, nothing that I can control about that. And now my next item has to be a Death Sense or a Guardian Angel. We can choose for both. I don't like Guardian Angel that much into a Caitlyn because you can just always put a trap down. But uh, yep, we're still in a good position now. So Darius is one item, I'm still three items. How did I do it? Efficient, mid to late game. I got my objectives, I didn't really get too many kills, but I do have a lot of farm and I got a tier two turrets. That's why I'm fed. Okay, this just has three items too. I'm gonna kill Lei again. I'll just kill them both. Now I have my three items. Now I'm a beast. Alright. Let's fix out the bot wave and we gotta play for Nash soon. And um, I do think Guardian Angel is probably the best. And the reason as to why is because Darius is true damage. Right? Darius is all the true damage. My teammates keep dying. Low does win games. Let me guess. Fundamentals? No. Actually, um, macro and tempo. But close. Close. Um, yeah, I think I want Death Sense. Or sorry, Guardian Angel. And I can get Chain Vest and a Cloth Armor, which will already give me a little bit of security as well. I'll have Flash soon and a budget Guardian Angel in the sense that I could Flash on their backline. And then when I'm about to die, just press stop, which I get my cooldowns again. So that's an insane kill. We can maybe play for Nash. I'm getting my Flash in 20 seconds as well. Oh, my Q ran out. Alright. I scared them though. <laughs> I cancelled it on accident. I don't know why we recall, by the way. Anyways, we got three items, and now we do a little bit of what uh, we nine angle shit. Get a boys. Let's go. Now we can do the dasher. Well, so. I want to chat if you found the mentals. GG. Who found the mentals? Alright, next up, top lane still is a tier 2 turret. It's a 600 tokens for the good guys. Those 600 tokens belong to me. Let me get the wrap up for sustain. I do have Guardian Angel in base, so right here. And it's actually better for me to quickly recall to stay in tempo with my teammates. So before we start pushing, you know, Twitch is dead, Zerath is in base, Akali is in base. It's better for me to recall right now. And now we're all on the same tempo. Now, when you have Nesher, it is very important that you try and avoid playing for jungle camps. Because we only have three minutes of Nesher. That means around six waves of means. So try to avoid wasting tempo by looking for jungle camps and stuff like this. Play proactively on the waves. So what the K6 is doing here is kind of shit because now it's very tricky to play with this wave because K6 is doing jungle camps, right? So avoid jungle camps, play with the waves as fast as you can because you only get around 6. And every wave missed this, yeah? Closer to Nash, you're getting spoiled. So now I actually have nothing, like I only have 3 minions here, right? And we die. This guy still only has 1 item, although I have 4. Yasuo is going to both sides, okay. I need to try and kill Lei, get on top of him and dive him. I can, because I have four items. So, let's full kill Lei. Beautiful. Pressuring enemy team. Guys, flash was a good flash by him. See, I never really killed this Darius this game. He's playing very safe. That's good. I don't need to. My team is gonna die though. See, I'm permanently kill lane. Yeah, my team dying is not really my fault. So, for my last item, I have multiple options. I see this guy's going death stance. This guy's still getting armor. This guy's a lot of armor. This guy's a lot of armor. It's a Serajus angle. So, I'm gonna have Cleaver. Eclipse and Sarajas for armor penetration. So even though they're getting very tanky, I'll still worship them. Okay. Yes, so my play for this bot tier one, so time to run. There he is. He's three items. He might go for next wave as well, so I'm gonna cue delay, calculating that he's gonna go for this wave. There you go. Okay, that sucks. He just question mark pings. Okay. I respect it. Remember that. I'll make him eat his own words. Give me a second chat. 
Again, low deaths win this games because, uh, yeah, I think he's on dying, which kind of makes the game tricky. They might have vision here. Uh oh. I have to flush that. One second for my ult. I gotta be careful because Diana can E ult me and it insta stuns me, right? They're on the zero. Trying to zone the Diana. Because Diana doesn't have Guardian Angel. Woo! Gotta give him the question mark, Pink Chat. Gotta give it back to him. Alright, beautiful game. So, we just died once when we were diving on our turn. That was our only death. That was also our only like big mistake. Other than that, we just stayed farmed. We stayed ahead of the item curves. And, um, yeah. So the thing is, all the concepts that I apply to my high elo games, I still apply here. It's just that people make a lot more mistakes. I feel like sometimes people, I mean, they're not close to par with mechanics, but there are some really good mechanical players here still too. They just make so many mistakes as well. GG. Clean game. Why do you think they changed Cassante? Because probably every pro player that is alive has complained about it. Because this champion has the most over overtuned kit ever. Cassante has the most disgusting kit that has ever been released. Imagine a tank that can one shot 80 carries, always. Imagine a tank that has two, two unstoppable abilities. Imagine a tank that has a CC chain for like three seconds by himself. I don't know, whatever. Piss off with that champion, bro. I'm really happy I didn't play professional this year because I swear I would have lost my mind playing against Cassante every game. Holy shit. All right, we play against Gnar. It could. Okay. Uh, we might want to go to Nasty this game. Let's see. Would you say Riven is good for low elo? Yes, but you need. You still need to master the champion. Everywhere you play, like, the biggest advice I could give to any low elo player out there, right? Before you start working on your fundamentals, it is champion mastery. It can be Riven, it can be Ranked, and it can be Garen. It I don't care what champion you play. Now, what you have to realize is, for example, the stepping stone in learning how to master Riven is higher than Ranked, because if you play 20 Ranked games, you're a good Ranked. If you play 20 Riven games, you still need to learn a lot. So, my advice to any low elo player would always be to get like get champion mastery first. Doesn't really matter what champion it is, and then work on your fundamentals. So if, if is Riven good for low elo? Yes, if you know how to play it. Is Garen good for low elo? Yes, and it's easier to pick up as well. Why are they decreasing ping communications? Because League of Legends is the most toxic community out there, probably. That is probably as to why. Who would you say is the best Jax to learn off of? Rangers, but he doesn't play that much anymore, sadly. All right, chat. We're playing against a Nar Echo. We have size Riven. I'm stronger level 1, Silas is stronger early game than Echo, so this is a really nice position for me in the early game. I have a stronger early game jungler, and I have a pretty good matchup in the early game for me, because Nar level 1 is very weak. A lot of- so the thing is, a lot of top laners have against- when they face against the range champions, is they don't recognize how bad the most range champions early game actually is. Besides like Vayne and Auction, they are really strong, right? But even Jace, for example, isn't the strongest level 1 champion. So what I want to do is try and find a position where I can cheese the Gnar in the early game so I can make use of my strong level 1 and his weak level 1, right? What's your favorite illegal drug? Water. Water. That's to be my favorite illegal drug. I don't do drugs. I don't smoke. Don't like it. You should neither. Did you? Uh, let's get a ward down to scout the first four waves. Oh, Gnar's gonna face check me. Oh, oh, oh baby! If I get one more auto, he's dead always, even if he flashes. Yes, sir! Yes, sir! Alright, chat, look at my XP. You see how I am 15%. I need three minutes, one caster. I'll be level two. Let's see if we can utilize that. Now, my next step, Nar doesn't have flash. I'm still stronger level one than the Nar. So what I'm going to try and do here is zone the Nar from the first three minions worth of XP. Again, one of the biggest things to learn on Riven is mastering your first ways. And Riven is one of the strongest level 1 champions in the game. Nar is leashing here. You know what that means, chat? I'm gonna make all six of these means meet in the center, and I'm going to try and zone the Nar from the first three means worth of XP. Then I'll be level 2 and he's still level 1. Then how can play? Now I step up. I sent in the XP range, it's about your screen. He loses the XP, I gain the XP, he lost all of it, I got all of it. Now, I'm literally... Okay, two castles, I guess, for level 2, and Nar is still level 1. 
So now I'm gonna mask my level two here. Nar doesn't know I get level two here. I know it. Okay, it's okay. We gotta make sure I don't lose any extra XP. And now let's only last it. And just slow push towards the Nar. So right here, I'm already in the most blessed position I could ever be in. I got the solo kill, of course, in, in the level one. But also, Nar has missed all the XP. So I'm gonna probably hit level three before this guy hits level two. So if you're Nar right now, you think loudly and you say, How can play? Any how can players? Yeah, that's how we go. Uh, four minutes. What the hell? How can I play? How can I play? How can I play? Alright, Echo is level 3 ganking. My only job here is to survive. If I survive, we're in a really good position. That's all I gotta do. Because my Silas is already 16 CS and Echo is only 12 CS. Silas has, uh, Echo has no topside camps anymore. Echo only has both side camps. So me keeping the Echo here in topside is just so bad for the Echo. So this guy only has three camps here. Like I said, my only job here is to actually stay alive. And now Echo's game is pretty much over. They're gonna try and regank me again, but Silas is finally here to now too. Echo should be in a trouble. Uh, now he's level one, two. He has no flush. Uh, yeah, it, it's just too easy. It's just too easy. He's still level two. Why is he level two, chat? Because we zoned him from the first three melees of EXP. What's the most hard in the early game? Gold or EXP? Well, there you go. It's EXP. Zone your opponents on the first three melees with the EXP. Have fun landing your opponents, whatever. Actually, I should have dumped this guy. I could have dumped this guy. I should have given this all of this. I should have given this all this EXP. I should have dove in there. My bad. Anybody found the mentals? Found the mentos. I muted myself. Oh, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. Alright, I'm level 5 whilst he just hit level 4, so we're still in a good position. I said maybe I should have got them boots as well, because he spaced me because of boots. Well, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. This is okay. He's gonna get mega here, and that might give him fake confidence. I'm not sure where Echo's at. Echo, okay, Echo's bot side, 31 CS. So Echo's full clear towards bot side. We know Echo's here. This guy doesn't have E yet. But his boots are broken! I should have went boots as well. My bad. It's okay. No one's gonna get mega here. I'm very close to level 6. He doesn't know that. By the time he gets level 5, I get level 6. If I'm gonna have flesh, I should be able to kill this guy again. You see how the EXP is still completely snowballing? That is why EXP is just so good in the early game. I always get my level up timers faster, so it's just completely impossible for Nard to ever play. So what I want to do right now is try to get this guy to 1 HP. When you're slow pushing waves like this to your opponents, right? When you're slow pushing, my opponent is not forced to walk up. But what I want to try and do is like utilize everything onto him to get him to low HP as possible. So what I do right now is I do this. Now Nar has to choose. I don't all in here to kill him. I'm all in him to make a to, to, to like force him to make a decision. Does he stay right now? Well, if he stays, he dies. If he recalls, I get two plates. So what can Nar do? That's why you all in before you crash the wave. Like I said, if not recalled, right? If he recalled all the way here, he would lose these two waves, plus I would get two plates. If he stays, he dies as well. So here's a clear example. When you slow push it towards your opponent, try to all in before the wave crashes. Prime example. And he gave me both, Juju. I'm gonna ward. No, he warded. And I was angry. This is a freeze, actually. She it's because Echo was here. He's gonna freeze this wave. I'm very close to my Hydra. No, I'm not. It's okay, we just recall anyways. And we buy this. We don't buy potions, why? Because we ain't no bitch. My mother daughter is a bitch. She's free he's freezing the wave, it's okay. We lose short term, but we get much more long term. That's why I have to recall here. How is there no wall up comment? There is, exclamation mark wall up. But don't type it. I'll pair my menu. Anyways. Here I don't buy shoes because I want to rush my Hydra as quick as possible. So buying boots here would delay 300 gold towards my Hydra. Right now, I'm not necessarily looking to kill the Nar. I'm mainly looking to get towards my Hydra as quick as possible. Yo, calm down, like Faker and shit. Thank you so much, Biakoya, for five Happy months. Happy birthday, King. Birthday? Thank you, I guess. 
It's so good to see you, Biakoya. I hope you're doing absolutely amazing. This is a normal wave. Normal wave gives around 130 gold. So I need 180 gold. Sucks! We don't get enough money. So we need to hard push this wave, but we don't have enough money yet for our item. So we need to stay a little bit longer. If it was a cannon wave, I would have gotten my gold, because cannon waves give 200 gold because of the cannon meme. This play is really low HP, but I can also get 100 gold by being in proximity of this herald. So that's my goal here. Being in proximity of this herald, because I'll get 100 gold. If I last hit it, I get 200 gold, but junglers don't really like it when you last hit it. But I'm a kind of a selfish player when I play solo queue, and this guy does not have a smite. So we're going to try and last hit it, and... Uh... <laughs> I suck! Suck it again. Okay, anyways, I get my level 8 here, still level 6. So what I'm going to do here is slow push this wave, hard push next wave, get a clean recall. It's the best for my tempo. Then we reset, we get our Hydra, we get boots as well. And we're in a lovely position. You lose the cannon. You guys know who a good coach is? He's level 7, alright. Now hard push this wave. Thank you so much, Sergi, for your prime. I appreciate it, brother. I can QQ the backline here, it's the fastest way to push. And now we reset. I don't mind losing HP. Why? I'm recalling anyways. Right? And the reason why this was slow push to hard push is now look. This next wave is here. So it's kind of hard for Nar to ever freeze this because it's to hold this means for legit 15 seconds, right? So he loses a lot of HP doing this. And then also, right now because of slow push to hard push, Nar does not have enough time to push this wave and push this wave before I'm back. Right? So that's why you slow push to hard push to get the best tempo for yourself. And it also doesn't allow your opponents to really get in a good position themselves, right? So I always lose nothing, and very often I get a freeze as well. Any fundamentals in the chat? Juju. <clears throat> Thank you. There you go, Spark Faith. Now I want to try and cancel Snar base. Get his temple down. And now Nar is stuck in lane. And I got my full Hydra. He's only double longsword. So now I'm going to be very annoying. I'm going to proxy. Nar is like, what the? What the fuck? What the hell? Uh, I died. Uh, mechanics. So yeah, now what can I do? If he didn't went for me, I would have just proxied and taken jungle camps and get the plate. If he went for me, I one shot him. Yeah, that's how you utilize fundamentals like your reset timers and wave manipulation, and you set up your kills through your waves. So if anything, we learn from this is we need to more so learn how to manage waves and manage reset timers to get kills instead of just playing. For kills, straight up. Ah, but you're kidding me. No, I didn't wall up. Uh, he might flash. Hey! 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 <gasps> Alright, we, we have to greedy. This is greedy. This is greedy. This is what you don't do. This was kill mentality. We could have just ran. We could have just ran. So this is what you want to avoid. Because now Nar actually gets back into the game, right? As long as I don't die, he never gets back into the game. But the only way that Nar remotely gets back into the game is by me dying. Because not only do I give him 750 gold right here, he's also gonna get plates, and I'm also losing a wave, so he's getting waves. So I'm losing a wave, 130 gold, he's getting the wave, so that's 260 gold. Plus I'm losing EXP, 300 gold. He gets 750 gold for my kill here, and he gets a plate. So in total here, one death, I lose around 1.2k gold. In e uh, 1.2k gold in XP and like uh, gold, you know, so that's why every death matters And if I don't die, I will be in a beautiful position never do this kind of deaths. They really ruin my game. So Learn from this. It's good that we make them Garn is good indeed. All right chat. What do we do? Slow push to hard push. Why slow push? Because his next wave is here and I want to do two waves into his turret so that I can get a better tempo I can maybe get the plate or else I can proxy and roam. This action is two and one. Let's see if we can shut that guy down as well Okay, we get 55 ability has now. There we go. He's back And I'm gonna go proxy now. Why? Nor is stuck under his turret. He's forced to stay under his turret What I'm gonna do next is proxy this wave and then see if I can find the echo on the rep off. Silas is here as well So this is absolutely beautiful wave first and when I get this wave right Nar is stuck under the sturt because from Nar's perspective he needs to stay under the sturt because the next one is coming too. So now we f find this echo here. Nar is to defend the sturt. We can just evade. I want this. Thank you, King. Okay, they were on Dragon. Next thing, we're gonna proxy again, but this time I'm going to utilize my proxy for something else. I'm Why is this guy so tanky? This action? I'm gonna proxy this wave, and then after I'm pro done with proxying, I'm gonna utilize this cannon wave to get the turret. Because when the cannon waves get into Nar's turret, Nar has to make a choice. Does he stop me, or does he stop the means? Well, he can stop both. 
So right here is... Why is he sh showcasing like Mega? He doesn't have flesh, right? He's gonna hold the wave. There we go. No really outplay from him. He has the flesh from members, so I can utilize it like that. And I get the kill, plus I get the full turn. Okay, I see double animation. We have this wave, we get the golems as well, and we're in a beautiful position. What are you trying to do, bro? I'm just gonna get your golems. Actually, Aksha might come. Let's not do it. Let's flip. I kinda need 200 gold though, because then I have a mythic, right? So I wanna get 200 gold before I recall. If I recall right now, it's bad. Why? Because I would recall, and then I'm like 200 gold away from my mythic, so I go back on the map, and then I'd have to recall again. Do we get this turret? It would give me 550 gold. That would be absolutely amazing. Doesn't really make the biggest difference though. So I want to get 2400 gold and then recall. Even though I lose a little bit of tempo now, it would give me tempo in the long run. This gives me 50 gold. Good way in base, I guess. Or I just go for one more wave and then I recall again. Alright, so to speed my own tempo here. Oh, this guy doesn't have flesh. Oh, I walked through a ward. So what I'm going to do here, Chad is actually slow push this wave. Why do I slow push? Similar to laning phase, by slow pushing here, I allow this wave to walk closer. And by allowing this next wave to walk closer too, I can hard push both waves and get a much bigger tempo timer for myself. If I only push this wave and reset, I'd have to instantly run back top. But by slow pushing wave number one and hard pushing wave number two, I get a much bigger tempo timer. And now, boom, I can just recall and I get an insane tempo timer. Okay, breathe. Where do we go next? What, where, where do you think I'm gonna open up, chat? Where do you think I'm gonna open up? Do we need... I'm gonna go for this. I go for Herald. Why Herald? Herald is 300 gold. After Herald, I can look for tier 2 turrets, which gives me 600 gold. I don't need to kill this Nara anymore, because I will not change the admin in this game. I need to kill the Echo and the Akshan. They're their win condition, right? Their bot lane is 0-5, their mid lane is, or their top lane is 1-5, but their mid and jungle are actually strong. So now, I have to find ways to shut down the Akshan, and I have to find ways to shut down the Echo. You see, Nara's freezing top lane here. Do I care? No. Because I can get more resources elsewhere. And this is the thing as well. People very often feel like, oh, if my opponent freezes on me, I need to instantly go there. If you can get resources elsewhere that outweigh the resources you're losing in top line for a NAR, then it's always going to be worth to start roaming. So here I get 200 gold. I might be resetting. I'm going to be bot. Me bot. Why do I go bot? Because I can get prior through bot and play for this tier 2 turret. And alternatively, I can just roam mid and get this tier 1 turret, right? So here, by going to bot lane, I will create tempo for my team. I win side lane really hard against Nilla and so, uh, the, uh, the Morgana, of course. Nar is freezing. Whilst he's freezing, I'm gonna make sure I get something else on the map. So I'm gonna loop around here with the Silas. Now let's go for the turret. Actually, no, we can just walk like this. Silas is looping around. Stop looping around, though. Okay, both thumbs. He's got instantly FS. <laughs> It's okay, the action is still really fat, the echo is still really fat. But I don't care about these guys. I will make them come to me. I'm not gonna go to them, I'm gonna make them come to me. I have the Herald, I get 600 tokens here, Echo is there. Okay, you're using his tempo there, boom, instantly spawn it. Why? 600 gold. So here, I'm expanding my lead. Not by making kills, chat, but by playing for neutral objectives on the map. Remember, I got the Herald, which is uh, 300 gold, and now I'm gonna get tier 2 turret. Boom, plus 600 gold. Right? So now I have 1.5k gold instantly. Now I'm gonna roam because they're overstaying. Now I can maybe look to, to kill them. This guy even 9 and 2, okay. Nice wall up. Where is action? He's, uh, he's stealth? I don't care. Now we're gonna push out this. So now we got both tier 1, both tier 2. Now we're gonna get mid tier 1. We got this guy's summoners. We killed the Aksha, or we killed the Echo. Now we get this turret as well. And only now do I want to go back to top. So what did Nar get? Well, nothing. He got some waves. What did I get? Mid tier 1, Herald, bot tier 2, and Naya Summoners. Worth it, chat? Would you argue that's worth it? Yes. Yes, it's worth it. All right, let's go for a death sentence. It's 3k gold, so let's try and get 3k gold before recall. There's a scuttle in the river, but it looks like Silas is going to go for it. That's all right. Um, Akshan is still their win condition, he's 10 and 2, so that's the one guy we really have to look out for. And that's why I also go for Death Sense first. This is a wrap up, is respawning, but I gotta keep in mind, I don't wanna die. With that combo, he actually cannot use his ultimate. Boom, we get the 3k gold from this as well. And now, Chet, where do you think I will open up after I recall? Where should I go after I recall? Where would you go? Where would you go after my recall right here? Where are you guys gonna go? I'm gonna go top. You know why I go top chat? Yeah. I wanna play for this tier 2 turret. Because it's a consistent thing. I don't care too much about this dragon. 
Right? This dragon is not going to change this outcome of this game, man. So actually, if everybody moves there, I will go there. So now I will adapt. I wanted to go top to play for the tier 2, but it looks like everybody in NMT is gonna go there. So then I will go there. If Nara stay top, I would go top as well. Because I need to shut this guy down. Enemy team can play if I'm here. Actual flesh. Goodbye, enemy last win condition. Nala, no flesh. No, I have a flash, remember? Alright, chat. The team fight is over. When the second the team fight is over, I don't keep chasing for kills. Why don't I chase for kills? Because they're useless. I can get so much gold elsewhere. I got 150 gold from this wave. Now I can get 300 gold here. Stop chasing for kills. The second the team fight is over, the second I've gotten my kills, the second I have tempo, boom. Use the tempo, the split second, and get turns. You saw how that fight was over and I instantly ran to mid wave. If I didn't do that instantly like this, I would never get this mid tier 2 turret. So I got the mid waves. And I got the turret, and now I get extra mid waves. That is much better than chasing for a potential Nar kill that maybe I wouldn't even get anyways. All right, so this is how you always get high tempo, high resource income. It all revolves around tempo. Everything in mid to late, if you listen to me closely, right, everything after laning phase actually revolves around tempo. Start understanding tempo. What are ways to get tempo? Well, for example, it's killing your opponents, right? If they're dead, they can't do anything, so they have tempo. Or if they have to recall, or if they're elsewhere on the map, so yeah. Okay, Nara's coming topside, Echo's coming topside, Akshan could be coming topside. I oh, know this guy's no flesh. A Q lay. This is a Q lay angle. It's okay. I'm gonna get this tier 2 turret because it's 600 gold. That's the last like, big objective on the map that I can get for free. Uh, but I need to not die for it, of course, so we're gonna play relatively safe, because I don't see anybody on mid lane, so they could be sending everybody top, so right here I'm gonna be a little bit more reserved, they're even putting this, who is this? It's Nyla, right? Nyla is the only one with blue trinket, so the see, they're all top! But Akshar, you have no flesh! You have no life! Oh, beautiful flesh by Mr. Echo! Oh, you also had no flesh! Oh, it looks like we just won the game. JJ. Well, there goes the 12 kill Akshan. It was almost like I struggled to play against him. It's almost hard. What I did well, chat? That's my tempo. And where I opened up. Did I win because of mechanics? Probably in landing phase, yeah. Did I win because of my background, my tempo? Mostly. Could do Nash. What do I build here? I'm gonna go Garden Angel because I don't have Flash. As if they can't kill me, how do they deal with me? And there we get this. And I mean, I'm just Exodia. I'm literally four items when the, the closest member has two items. One item, one item, one item, one item. It's completely over. It is Jovert for any team. I'm not gonna use the plan, I'm gonna wall up. I'm gonna use the plan. I can do two things right now. We can play for Nash. But what I can do as well is just go bot. And if I go bot, enemy team cannot play for Nash. But I'll completely destroy their base. So I like going bot here more. Also, my teammates are kind of out of tempo. Actually, no, they are on tempo. Most valuable sweeper. This guy has flesh again. Good, we got a flesh. That was mechanics, of course. Nice, keep pushing. Yo, Cletus! Good to see you, brother. So we keep pushing silent here. There could be somebody here, I've killed late. Nobody here, no one home. I just finished again. Remember when Echo and Action were like kinda scary this game? I just neutralized them too easily. The only kill this Nar has this game is me mistaking and overstaying on the Echo. And the that guy's good. Thank you. Thank you for the sub and thank you both. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. I kill you for the two months, brother. Alright, we're level 16, 420 damage on the inhib. Shit! Oh, we need passive. GG. What? I'm a passive. Uh, let's watch it some people chat. It's time for montage now. Okay, this guy has three items. Still gonna be a little bit respectful. Well, that tickles my ass. Alright, let's get a rep buff. Let's heal more. Rep buff gives you overtime healing. And then we get ult back and then we'll just deal with them. They're getting our ult back slowly. 
Not enough flash. Level 17 from 1 main 2. I can't take that. Let's do a little bit of mechanics chat. Oh, well, okay, don't look at my mechanics actually. <clears throat> don't look at my mechanics actually. Oh, misfortune. Ah! Alright, chat, we're full build, minute 24. What do we get out of the last item? I'm kind of vibing with QSS here, I think. Okay, okay, chat, let's do 1v5. We get flesh up, we level city, we have everything. Let's go, let's go 1v5. Now we can do... Now we can go undisciplined. Now now you can look for a montage. If I was coaching you right now, I'd say go for a montage, GG. We don't need to do anything anymore. We've completed our quest lines. Now we can end the game. GG. Good! Good! Did we learn something new this game? Did we knew something? Did we learn something new this game? Oh, Gragas matchup. Oh, what? No, it's Garen matchup. This is definitely Tenacity game, no? Gragas, Garen, Alistar. Yeah, should run Tenacity this game. Okay, this is not gonna be an easy game against enemy draft. We're gonna have a hard game here. They have Gragas to knock me away, they have Garen to silence me, and they have Alistar to knock me away as well. There's a lot of things going on in the enemy team comp that are not good for my champion, so let's go. A challenge. I like it. Garen with Flesh Ignite, Conqueror Resolve. Finally with the Singe player. This is gonna be a very, very tricky game for sure. Oh, well, Chet, as I always do, I have a Nunu jungle, they have a Jarvan jungle. The Jarvan jungle is much stronger in the early game than my Nunu. Although Ner Nunu can skirmish, what I wanna try and do is Q up the wall here and of course prep the first waves by getting a ward down so I know how Jarvan is going to be path in this game. Alright, now this Garen is playing with Conqueror, so that makes him a little bit more oppressive in the early game. But one thing you always have to keep in mind is he can auto Q auto, but I can auto Q auto Q auto, right? So I actually win in level 1 simply because I have more auto attack cancels. The only thing I have to be wary of is that if he cancels me during my combo, then my Q can run out. So that's kind of how the level 1 goes here. He's D Blade Star, that's terrible, honestly. It's really aggressive, which I can respect, but it's kind of terrible. Jarvis is starting topside, pathing into bot. And Nunu's passing into top, so I'm actually strong sided here. Um, the only thing to keep in mind here is that Jarvan could level 3 gank top, especially because I've been playing aggressive. But with Garen leashing here, it's just going to be easy to get priority. Uh, if you get level 2 first, it's always going to be good for you as well. So here we're forced strong sided, and my plan here is to probably do a second wave crash, make it advance back into me. Jarvan's going to go for golems next, so I'm not scared of getting early ganked here by the Jarvan. No way that Jarvan does a level 2 gank if the golems. Clues. I want to check if he's bone plating, but I assume he doesn't. But he can still run bone plating. No bone plating. Good. One melee would actually give me level 2. I don't need the caster. Let's see if the Garen knows. Level up timers, G. Let's see. Still in diamond. It's working, chat. Still in diamond. I'm utilizing my level 2 up timers. And I'm winning my lane. With one trick! Yeah, it's hard to play League of Legends, bro. If you guys are still not doing this in your games, you guys are all griefing. Learn these level of timers out of the top of your head and learn how to space appropriately to abuse it. And you will get, you'll legit win so many laning phases. Now I need one more meme for level 3. Let's see if Garen knows. No, it looks like Garen knows. Alright. Nunu is very late on this clear. I, what? Oh, he took enemy blue buff. Interesting. Jarvis here. Jarvis both sides, so I'm gonna be pinging here. All right, we know Jarvis is here. Okay, level four. I'm gonna proxy wave number five. And race. Jarvis there. Looks like my team is being chilling. And now I can hard push this wave in one go. Violence to end 
Now Garen is stuck in lane. Whilst I'm already recalling, Garen has to collect this wave, and after that he has to choose. Does he recall as well? Or does he look to... I'm gonna sell potion and get my D-Blade Longsword. I like D-Blade in this matchup because Garen plays towards execution ranges, right? Any champion with execution ranges, such as Garen, Pantheon, Urgot, Trogath, HP is very broken because, of course, you keep them out of their execution range, so HP is very good. Now, Garen has two options. He can try to hunt push this wave, but I'll be back in time because I took my tempo recall. So now, I lose nothing because I proxy... Maybe I lose one million worth of XP. But other than that, I lose nothing, and now I have massive items over the Garen. Why mesh? <laughs> Lost one win. Okay, it sucks. Nothing else. Now, Jarvan is going to go back into topside because there's no camps in both sides, so... Jarvan is guaranteed to be topside again. Gotta keep that in mind here. Need one minute to get my level 5. Alright, let's hard push. Looks like Jarvan is trying to gank, maybe. Are Jar Jaren and Garen like brothers? They both are like uh, the Masa, no? Alright, we are here, so we can scout the second clear of the Jarvan. Now, theory, I can just proxy this wave again. But can I do anything productive with the proxy? I could recall again, arguably, right? Or recall is not that bad. Or I can roam mid here. I think I like to roam here. It just sucks that I lost the one melee, because losing the one melee, that would have given me level 6. Gragas got level 6 there. Yeah, probably not the best play. May have should have just recalled, but it's okay. Garen will be level 6 because he lost 0 XP. So Garen will be level 6 exactly here. Alright, I need one more melee to make myself level 6 as well. What I'm going to do with this wave is actually make it push towards me. And the way I do that is by pulling the wave right here. And now it'll push into me. Because the means don't actually meet in the center, they meet close towards the side. Plus because all the means aggro me and I drop them at the same time, they all aggro the same means. So now the wave will... Push towards me. Garen loses a little bit of XP. I lost two means already. And that might be his third. Alright, Garen lost three means. Four means. Lovely. First thing we do when Garen comes back is check his items. He could have a whip or tier two boots. Whip. So he went full damage here. He lost the cannon. Alright, so this Garen is really, really just rushing full damage. He wants to one-shot me. There's a W. If he goes for less, I'll let him. Oh, couldn't get my last ult on him. That's Garen with a W. Cannon moon. He has W now. That's the tricky part. He has W and Ignite. Let me get that shit. Ah, oh, but come on. Good job, Caster. You fought valiantly. So I could go for Gore Drink in this game. I could go Whip Refillable here. Uh, but it's kind of risky. Yeah, I think I just kind of like Hydra too much. I already had double longsword as well, right? Uh, trying to find me. Good luck. I don't need to stay full HP. The reason as to why is because Garen's got a hard piece of his wave and he should recall. And there's still a plant in the river. Or there should be a plant in the river. Unless Jarvan takes it right now. And uh, the longer I stay in lane, or in base rather, the more means I've been losing. Alright. Nunu still hasn't recalled 7 minutes in the game. It's so, like, it's so bad. That's why when you're tracking the junglers, you always have to press tab to see how much farm they have and what items they have. Like right now, if, my, if we were to fight a 2v2, this guy has these items, this guy has zero items, so he just lose by default. Yo, fake faker. Welcome, mate. So we have one plate lead here, we have a little bit of a CS lead, so we're gonna be fire position. This is Scott to respawning as well. My spirit is not lost. Okay, there's the plan I was talking about earlier. Jarvan has no or Garen has no ult ignite rather. I know he has a pink one right here. 
But if I go for the Bing Ward, he can hard push this wave, so I don't want to give him Prior for free. Also, I'm going to get level 8 a little bit before him, and my Ignite will come back a little bit before his. So my first step here would be to try and chunk him towards like maybe 70% of his HP when he goes for a last hit. Because then on my Ignite, I can all of him for free. Use W. Now, I do believe this is worth it for me, because I can burst, so can he, but he doesn't have ult yet. But I do think the better player should just actually recall. I lost a little bit too much HP and he regens a little bit too much. Actually, I'm gonna do a trick here. Wait, I'm gonna do a trick chat. I'm gonna do a trick. Wait. I'm gonna act as I'm recalling, but I'm actually gonna walk in the bush. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. Surely, right? Surely he goes to hard push this wave now. Surely he doesn't know that I actually did not reset, but instead I walked into the bush in his face. It's really tricky to see, like, the distinction. Go E. What's up? Goodbye. <laughs> this is an old trick I used to do. It is a little, little bit juicy, but it works sometimes. So instead of recalling, the, you recall next to the bush. And on the very last frame, instead of actually recalling, you walk into the bush and you think you recalled. It's like, it's, it's like you don't think about it, you know? Because you just assume you see your opponent disappearing that they've recalled. So you have to stand like really close to the bush. bush. Yeah, he thought I recalled. No, 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 sir. I did not recall. Alright, so Kaisa is pretty strong. Their Jarvis is very weak. Grog is relatively strong. My Zer is very strong. No. Uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, the game is looking pretty good. Alright, Garen is pushing this wave. Um, at this point in the game, I never have to kill the Garen anymore to expand my lead. Ultimately, I want to look for plates. I want to look for um, camps. I want to look for basically consistent ways to expand my lead without having to kill the Garen, right? I have, I have Hydra E only as this. So I push waves 10 times faster than he does right now. Okay, he's playing aggressive here, so I'm assuming Jarvis here. Also, my jungler is mid, and he's showing mid. Alright. I mean, I have no idea where Jarvis is at, so... Now we do. Alright, Jarvis should react to this if he's half smart. This is gonna be a cannon wave, so I want to utilize the cannon wave to get the plate. I hope Jarvis goes to mid lane because he sees the Herald here. And that allows me to also... Uh, just hard push this wave with a Q delay. No way the Jarvan is still here, right? Ain't no way, chat. Now he's mid. Oh, but does Garen know about Q delay, chat? Now I'm all inning not to kill this guy. I'm all inning to get, put this guy at 1 HP. So now Garen has to choose. Does he stay on the turret? Well, if he does, he's going to die. Look at this. So the thing here is, what to learn is, when you're slow pushing your waves towards your opponents, what you want to do is all in. Let's say Garen recalled here. He would lose out on these two waves and I would get around three plates, right? So it would be really worth it for me. But if he stays, I kill him and I still get all the plates. So you put Garen in an impossible decision because obviously nobody wants to lose two waves and, and, and like... Um, lose three plates, right? So whenever it is your turn in the lane, meaning you're slow pushing towards your opponent, try to all in as hard as you can to force them in this impossible decision, because ultimately it's the most uncomfortable place to be in as any player. Right? I think I'll always stay my tempo here, just so that I can get these plates for guaranteed. Because I'm not gonna have a lot more ways where I can play on. Does that make sense, chat? Type 1 in chat if that made sense. I was like, I maybe rephrase it a bit differently, but it was the clearest example I can give. My hands are Good. So start abusing this. Whenever you're slow push towards your opponent, try to hard push. Put them in an uncomfortable position. Now I want to start going to bot lane. Why? Because there's nothing for me to really do top lane anymore, and I can play for this tier 1 turret. Uh, Tabbies are so good this game, actually. So I'm gonna be greedy. So. There's too many builds that I can run this game. I could go Gore Drinker, I could go Tabis, I could go Hydra Gore Drinker because they're not building a lot of armor. I could go Tabis and I like Death Stance, but I still think that this is completely fine too because I'm already kind of snowballing. I actually need to play really smart. How do they know I'm here? I guess there's a ward maybe in lane. Kai's has a big shutdown. But in theory, right here, enemy team still has to recall because they got the, they just got a shit ton of kills, right? Kai's got like four kills, she's dominating now. So. Kaisa should really look to recall, and when she's recalling, I want to try and get this turret. The enemy overstays, I'm also fine to fight. So 
So realistically now that should give me an opportunity to go for this tier 1 turret, play to a drop. If Kaisa overstays, okay, no, Kaisa went mid. So Gragas would be here, I guess. And Alistar is moving here as well. Hmm, I think I have enough time to get this. But Garen is getting a full turret as well. Alistar is gonna hack flush onto me, over the wall. Oh no, Alistar went mid. Okay, I could have gotten it. This guy's ever frost. Gotta keep that in mind. It sucks that this guy gets a full turret. He really shouldn't. I'm gonna try and Q3 in this guy's face and then E sideways, okay? So, Q3 in this guy's face. Oops, never mind, that was a Nunu. Don't get the cannon. Please, let me give me this alone. I need full gold. I need 1600 gold on my reset. And then I can also sell my D Blade to try and get close to the 1600. 1600 gives me Cleaver, after Cleaver we go probably Eclipse, well, let's see. Kaisa's here, not sure where Garen is at, not sure where Jarvan is at, but Kaisa is my biggest threat. Okay, Garen got full Stride Breaker from that. I still don't have 1600 so I don't want to recall yet, so we go for Gromp instead. Jarvan is fighting mid, he has Tabi, so that's the first armor I actually see now. So, with verifying that Jarvan is going to be building armor, I definitely want Eclipse after my cleaver. Maybe I can snatch off a kill here. Oh, he's gonna take this teleport. Learn from your mistakes. No? Okay, what I do here is I slow push this side wave. Why do I slow push? It's very similar to laning phase. By slow pushing the side wave, I allow this wave to walk closer to me. And then I get double wave, and then I can get both side waves guaranteed. Right? But actually, everybody is mid, so I guess I can do it anyways. They might use their tempo on this Herald. I really want to try and get the 600 gold, but Garen is just the Guardian, so I can't. So now we recall. Um, team fighting is very tricky, because CC, CC... This guy can CC me as well. So, knock up, knock up, knock up. Two knock ups even. So, like, yeah, play 5v5 is just really, really hard this game. But I have tempo on top lane right now, or on bot lane because I pushed two waves and the side was pushing into me. So, I'll gladly go top here. Because ultimately, if I get high resources, I can still carry this game. My next item is going to be Mythic, probably Cleaver. Although they don't have that much armor, so maybe Dustblade is actually better. And then after Dustblade, it also allows them to not knock me up that much, right? Because I watch somebody and then I get Dustblade. So I think I'll actually go Dustblade. And after Dustblade, I'll be looking probably for Death Stance against the Kai'Sa Jarvan. Don't think I need Magic Resist this game, it's only Gragas. Alright, I want to try and get this. I mean, Tristana should just go Bolt. It's okay, the thing is, this Herald will give me 300 gold. And with the 300 gold from Herald, I can get a tier 2 card, which will give me 600 gold, right? So ultimately, this is a good... But Nuno's going bold. Like, ultimately, this is a good investment for me if I can get it. Because it's 300 gold right here, right? And then that will zolt into a tier 2 turret, which will give me 600 gold. But there's a good chance Jarvan might steal this. But I think I've dodged this vision pretty well. Okay, chat, this is massive. 300 gold right there. You see, I'm 3 kills up, right? But I'm legit not even looking for kills. I'm looking for neutral objectives on the map. Because those are consistent. And these will give me my LP also. I'm going to sell this. And let's get this. So right now, I got in the 300 gold from the Herald. I also pushed out the top side wave, so I have a little bit of tempo there, right? Gragas is collecting here. And now I want to use that Herald for this tier 2 turret. Granting me 600 gold, gave, getting me really close to 3 items. This guy has 2.5 items. Oh, not 2.5, two, 2 items. I need it and I'm getting the third. I think that doesn't work like that, Nunu. Oh, well, it does. What the hell? Nunu's broken. I might, I don't need to Herald then. I don't need to Herald now, chat. This is massive. You know why? Because now I can just get this turret and then I can maybe Herald here or Herald here. Which would be absolutely insane because then I can get even more gold. Yes, I'm gonna play all top lane champions over time. No, I will just Herald actually. Because the enemy team might be moving for me. Actually, this guy just fled. Wait, it's only Elstar, by the way. Okay, Herald. Okay. Get this. But by them taking my gold, I don't get my item yet. I need 2k gold chat, then I have my item. So I think right now we just dip. I'm gonna get my... Okay, Tristana's recalling. That gives me the opportunity to push a dead wave. There's a camp right here that I can take that gives you 100 gold. Oh, 
Okay, I got both her subs and her ult. That's massive. I'll take that. She just misstepped. I was cute laying all the way. I was full delaying it, and she stepped into my EQ range. So, yeah, that's her mistake. I got both her subs and her ult. That's absolutely massive. And she has a recall. So, that gives us an opportunity to play for Dragon now. If I had ult, bro, I would win the game right there. It's okay. We take it anyways. Can I wait to give me 200 gold? I'll have item. I can maybe get enough tempo to also get the turret. Because enemy team should also be eyeing the dragon. You see, I'm not playing for kills at all. I'm mainly playing for neutral objectives, and the kills will come my way eventually. Wait, can I sustain? Oh, she actually recalled. Oh, this skirmish is just bad now. I'm not gonna go to the skirmish. You know what? I'm just gonna utilize my tempo and <laughs> push mid lane here. Okay, I got Gragas TP. I'll take it. They lose Oh, we lose Dragon, but it's okay. I got my mythic. I can also overstay my tempo here a little bit. Because ultimately, if I re- Oh! <gasps> it's pretty big, but they might play for Nash. They might go for Nash now. Yeah, I don't know. If they go Nash, I don't think I can stop it. And I also have a 1k shutdown that I don't want to lose. I think I have to give Nash here. Unless I can like sneakily steal with ultimate. Still have a pink ward on it. Yeah, they're gonna do Nash. Is they're smart. What if my ult steals it? I mean, they don't know I'm here. Oh, they know I'm here. Yeah, this is what I mean. I literally can't team fight, by the way. This is what I mean with not being able to team fight this game. They don't fight me here, though. Like, I can't team fight. Legit, Alistar, Gragas, full one shot me there. Like, I have to avoid team fights. There's one more neutral objective for me to play around, and that's this tier 2 turret. So, I'll be playing for that, I guess. Yes, Gore would have been decent, actually. In fact, Gore would have probably been better. Yes, this was a Gore Drinker game. Why Dustblade? Because they don't really have armor, but Gore Drinker was honestly better. Yes, Dustblade is bad. Dustblade is a very bad purchase here. I should have gone Gore Drinker. You guys are right. Gore Drinker, Death Stand Small, I carry the game. I, I, I probably might even sell this. 2.1k, I lose 1k gold, that's too much. I just go for Hex Drinker, Death Stance, and then we'll see. But yes, I should have went Gore Drinker. This is terrible. You guys are 100% right. No, I don't need Eclipse. The, this is the only guy getting armor, no? Actually, this guy's going Zonyas too. I mean, this guy's going Zonyas, this guy going armor. And this guy has armor too. Actually, Eclipse is better. What is he doing though? This guy doesn't have flesh yet. That's pretty massive. Guys is pushing our vault. Uh... We draw an EQ here, we can maybe kill. No. Okay, we play for the top tier too. I don't know. Dust play is like the worst one. Eclipse would have been okay. Gore Drinker would have been. I don't even think Gore Drinker is okay. Armor. He's gonna armor. He's going armor. This guy's. No, I need Eclipse. I actually need Eclipse. It's still really hard to carry this game. My mid laner is pretty much not a champion. She's level 11. I don't know how to carry this one yet. Okay, we got third, fourth item. I think I just finished this, but it's kind of terrible. No, I shouldn't finish it. The thing is, I do get my mythic, mythic passive, right? By finishing this item, but I still don't think it's good enough. Okay. Kaisa might have flushed him. His W came from here. Where is she? I mean, they have Baron Recall still for 10 seconds, so they're out. Baron, Baron stops at minute 3, so... You can always check if any team still has Baron by checking the timer. If the timer after Baron is on 3 minutes, then Nash is gone for them. Okay, my Zarya has 3 items now. She's pretty strong. That bossy damage though. 
I don't know if someone else. Okay, massive. Very good ball play by Thresh. Bad bitch. Okay, what can I get? Mid, I think. Some maximum resource I can get here. Is there still mid here too? There's also a dragon, we're getting that. So we get a lot from this. That's the first, like, real skirmish, I guess, that I kind of joined, right? Garen could be looking for me here. If not, I just get this tier 2 turret. Hey, we got tier 2 dragon. Or, tier 2 dragon. We got the third dragon in the tier 2 turret. Tier 2 dragon. Get this rep off too. Do I want Garden Angel or Death Stones? I think. Garden Angel is kind of better. But we can team fight here, but uh, no. Too many knock ups. I can't team fight here. I have a 1k shot. I don't want to lose my flesh either. It's Nash in 1 minute. We should just dip. I should not use anything right now because ultimately Nash is in 1 minute. Even if my teammates die, they kind of get nothing with it. So it's alright. I'll recall here. Let me really think here. So I can get Death Stance, yeah, and I also think I should get Tabby's. Nah, I'm no bitch. Let's go. No bitch, Jet. I'm no bitch. Do I see there with 170 haste? Holy shit, I'm I have 63 cooldown. <laughs> what? 63 only, only 63. I'm let play Earth. My E is 2.2. GG. Okay, let's have some fun. Where are at, Kaisa? I find. We don't have much vision here. Okay, the Grokster. Bomba! Bomba! I'm in this guy's head. My movement. I gotta play so careful against enemy team comp. One mistake, I'm dead by the way. I don't have Guardian Angel. One mistake, I'm dead. One shot. I have so many knock ups. We have very fast Nash. We have two AD carries. And we have Nunu Smite. Nice. Here, little bitch. Oh, Alois and Wallops! Alois landing Wallops, huh? GG. This has been a perfect game, honestly. Enemy team was so hard to play against. They have a fat Gragas, they have a fat Kaisa, but I just always avoided them. And I'm still 300 CS, and somehow I'm still 9 kills. Like, enemy team is not even making that many mistakes, I'm just making zero. Love that swing games, keep that in mind. Kai'Sa's four items, still gonna be careful. Actually, it's only this Kai'Sa. If I kill this bitch, we end the game. I'm gonna kill Lei. Goodbye Kai'Sa, play a bit better. Perfect game right there, Jet. Well, that's pretty much the limits you can reach with Riven, huh? Fundamentals, tempo, macro, suck it, GG. That was one of the better games against a comp that hard counters me. Like pretty much every champion in the enemy team is good against me in one way or another one. GG. Uh, yo, Levy, alright. Uh, who's top lane here though? Singed? If Singed in it's very easy because they are, um, yeah, okay, so they're both AP. I don't need to. Um, Tenacity this game, they have, uh, you know, they don't have any hard CC. You should do it alphabetically. Do you guys think I should do the unranked to masters alphabetically? Or should I just go... Uh, I will also do a Mundo unranked to masters. Yes, I will. No, but the thing is, paradoxically, I want to do the 
champions that get played the most first. So I'm gonna do Garen and Aatrox first, and that, that is already hard alphabetically. So I, I think it's not smart. Like I wanna do Garen and, and um, Aatrox first. Also, I'm only gonna do top lane champions, right? All right, this thing is called Genius Smell. All right, so around Diamond Three MMR now. Plat One. This guy is Platinum One, so this guy is probably a Smurf. Uh, Emerald One. I am Plat Three, so yeah, this guy is a Smurf as well. This guy is Diamond 3. So we're around the Diamond MMR now. Diamond 3 Singe player. Let's go. What testicle do I need to give for you to coach me? I ain't taking testicles, bro. You can type exclamation mark Discord. Just send me a DM on Discord. But uh, it's through pencils, not through testicles. What you want to do against Singe players is playing with Ghost TP. So two things that I want to do here. First thing is I don't want to allow Singe to proxy here. So I do that by guarding here. And I ask my jungler to guard here. Guard here, please. Like, uh, just, just normal. Just... Just okay. I'm gonna do go you guys here. Good coaches. Clan, thank you for the team one, bro. I appreciate it. Oh uh, yeah, good. 50 subs again today. You guys are the goats. Thank you so much. Who's bad? Oh my mama mia! This guy my flushing me. They have a blitzcrank as well. So you might have to run, bro. <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna ward here, so I know what Lily's gonna do in the early game. Yeah. Nilly looks to be starting rep buff. I don't know where the Singed is at though. Singed could be looking to proxy. Let's see if we can find the Singed. Oh, it smells like Piggy over here! What is up, little Piggy? So good. Remember, he does not have flesh. Yeah, he kind of did get access to the wave too early on. He used both potions though. It's okay. I'll let this crash. You know who a good coach is? Thank you, Igor. Alois. Appreciate that. That guy is good. What was Can that we get a Jack's unranked to Master's laughing face. Yes, sir. You will. Thank you so much for the three months. I'm very unfamiliar with that badge. Is that is that like you're working at Twitch? That's amazing, bro. Good to see you. Yes, you'll also get a Jack's unranked to Master's. Jax is probably like in top 5 champions that I want to do. It's going to be Riven first, Garen Aatrox next, and then maybe Jax honestly already. Belvets can bomb on him. I'm not gonna help. Okay, we got 12 out of 12. Very good. Good to see you, boss. Thank you so much for the three. Nilly is still pathing into the top, so I gotta keep that in mind as well. In the meantime, we just slow push here. I'm assuming Sinks is. Okay, it's TP, yeah. Uh. With two waves, the maximum he can buy is refill, so I don't think there's anything other than a refillable potion here. Yeah. I'm gonna get my level 3 first, and then I'm gonna look for a trade here. With my level 3. He's gonna get level 3 as well. He has no flash, so we can go. If he lands knock up, then he could be dying. I can flash. No. Okay, he's too fast actually. Um, if anybody flames my wall up, I'm perma banning you. Yo, thank you so much for your prime, bro. Yo, stop it! There's gonna be a Nilly there, careful bro, you're walking into a Nilly. Okay, this wave is slow push towards me, so it's a beautiful position. He could EW me, alright, use Q. I'm not gonna get level 4 here exactly from the wave, because Belvet leashed a little bit of XP. Uh, what I can do here is slow push very slowly, uh, and then even slow push that wave, and then hard push the next wave. I'll have pickaxe in my base, and Singed is in, in throughout that entire window. It's not allowed to walk up full assets, and then I can just look to reset and lay lock him. So, we're still slow pushing here. Nilly died with 13 CS bolts, so I guess Belvedere can actually invade. Very nice. So, we slow push this, and then we hard push this way, Veriko. Yo. Mr. Uh, Imwald, good to see you, boss. I'm doing amazing. This guy is gonna lose all these last hits while I'm slow pushing. And now, the faster we hard push next wave, the faster we can Rico, and the less time this Singe gets to play out the bounce. He could move to the Belvet here, so I just can't help. Focus the cast is the fastest way to hard push any wave. Beautiful. Of course, Revan is very good to hard push waves at level 4. And now we recall as fast as possible. I got pickaxe refillable. Sing has two options here. The thing is, he literally like stops himself with this, by the way. Smart to stage my own planet. Now, the combo I did there is you E, and at the end of your E animation, you can double cast um, two abilities at once. 
So I E, and then I flash, buffer the auto attack, and then W Q at the same time. Click on the ground, and I can auto attack again. But I didn't even need it. I don't even know why DPI, bro. I'll, I'll be totally honest. I buy refillable, and we're rushing Hydra there. Why are we rushing Hydra? AP, AP, Z, uh, like, Gordrick is okay against them, but Hydra is still better, especially for sideline. They have a little bit of burst here, but it's okay. And after Hydra, look at enemy champions, okay? So, do I need Cleaver this game? Most likely not. This champion doesn't buy too much armor. This champion doesn't buy too much armor unless she goes Zoyas. No armor, no armor. Could go armor. So, I probably go Hydra into Dustplate, and then I go defensive options like Dust and Small, and then nobody can kill me anymore. Okay, Derp. No, Dare Teep in Wald. There you go. Dare Teep in Wald. I got you, boss. Okay, but now I lost my kill window because I'm trying to pronounce your name. Dare Teep in Wald! All you, bro! All you! Okay, so. <gasps> Two decisions here. Um, nearly died both sides. Only 70 says. Hello! Let's go 3. Thank you for the prime. I'm gonna RP this way and I'm gonna instant recall again because I can get call fields and a longsword with that and I don't need the plate. Sage is recall or uh, is respawn, so he's running back to the top side as well. AOE other means like this and we instant recall. We can just recall right here. Oops. Alright, let's go. We don't need to buy pink wards. Pink wards are for noobs because you can't track junglers. I can't track the runners. I don't need pink wards. Watch me die to this nearly. Anyways, all good. So this is gonna be level six here, and uh, I'm completely fine letting this thing push me in. I don't have ult, so uh, he's probably gonna hard push this way, but that's completely fine. If he wants a proxy, that's okay as well because I can match it. I have very fast push, and then that will give me tempo as well. So uh, I think best play for Sings right here is to hard push this wave and loop around and go proxy. I can't stop him, so if he does that, that's all fine. Yeah. And like I said, I'll just match it. I can't do much about it. I don't have my ult. Two Qs will one-shot these backlines me in because I have these items. And this skull was respawning, so I'm going to be eyeing that. So, Sinx only got the wave, but I'm getting the wave plus the skull to crap. And that is why I'm fine with him proxy him because ultimately I am already super far ahead. And this is the way I can expand my lead. So, enemy jungler is pretty far behind this game, but enemy mid laner is really far ahead of my mid laner. He's proxying there. Okay. Millie's here, doing red buff. I don't think my mid laner wins this still. Again, two means or two Qs here, one shows this. And I want to wait for my Q, and you can Q EQ through this turret and actually not take any damage. Five gold right here, always make sure you get that. So now I Q EQ, and I don't take any damage. Alright, so you just gotta hug the wall, walk as close as you can into turret range before your first Q cast, and then you take zero damage. And now I'll be taking this. Actually, now it's gonna cost me too much HP. I think it's better to start this now. My Bell Vettos should come. Oh. What? I, I stepped backwards for like no apparent reason, by the way. What the hell? Oh, thank you, Nilly. Thank you, Nilly. Can I get some thank you, Nilly, in the chat? But I still don't know where my champion moved backwards, by the way. I w Can somebody make a clip? Because I'm fairly certain that I was clicking towards the Nilly. Maybe I clicked like here, so my character started walking backwards because it wanted to walk around the wall. So maybe I misclicked and auto pathing to switch my direction, but I'm pretty sure I misclicked there. Or so, sorry, that, that I shouldn't path like that. Sorry, I'm pretty sure I didn't misclick. All right, no armor, no armor, no armor, no armor, no armor. You know what that means? Dusk blade second after Hydra chat. That's what it means. I kind of want to recall because I have Hydra. This guy's a little piggy. It's okay though. All I want to do is get one me and get my level 9, QQ the backline me in, and recall, okay? So here, I'm gonna get my level 9 first. Q. QQ. All the W. Let's go. What's your second best champion? I don't know, I can play a lot of champions. Rankton, Camille, Fiora. I mean, I, I kinda want to recall, but I guess I'm not forced to yet. I don't have flash ult or anything like that. This guy doesn't have flash ult at all. Why am I getting something for? <sighs> Ultimately, the play was just bad. Stop baiting me. Alright, there comes the eagle. My entire team is kind of losing.
Para chat. Low death swim games. Let's see if we can make it true. Sing chest TP. That would actually got there. That's crazy. So I gotta keep in mind you're at Sing chest TP. Be flushed. Sing chest TP here. So I'm not gonna go for the wave. There we go. Okay, what a beautiful position. You clicked outside of Baron and the champion took the ultimate path that was going behind. Yeah, okay. I thought that was the only reason why my champion maybe directed that pathing, so I guess that's actually what I did. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that was really wonky. That's I guess what I did. Yeah, I clicked too far up. Okay, let's go. <clears throat> so my Ezreal's pretty fat. My mid and Jung are really struggling though, but she did get the Herald, so that's pretty good. Lily has no flush. It's okay, bro. Mr. Genius smell. You go do your proxy thing, I'll do the same. Ultimately, I'll still get more from it, because he can only proxy waves, but I can proxy waves plus jungle camps, plus row mid, so... If he proxies, he only gets, um... Like I'm saying, the wave, right? But I can just get simply a lot more. I will get the wave, plus jungle camps, plus roams. I don't know. I get tempered to move the dragon here. I can do a lot of things. First things first. Grumper boy. Maybe I'll move to mid, actually. Ultimately, Silas isn't looking too interested in this mid wave, so. It's a full canon wave. Ultimately, I don't even have to move here to this fight. In the sense that if I just stay mid lane right here, I can get like four plates if Zed moves. So, Zed, I don't think, can do a lot more damage to my teammates if they play well. And I'm gonna get a massive amount of plates. So, you see here, I just play very selfish, I play very for myself. But if I move all the way bot here at maximum, maybe I get the kill here on the Zed, which is 300 gold. But if I just move right here, like Zed killed my Belvet now, right? He killed the Belvet. It's okay, because here in the meantime, I'm getting 500 to 600 golds in, in plates and waves. Whereas if I move to the Zed here, I would have only gotten a kill, maybe. And that, that is legit a maybe, but this is guaranteed. That's why I always go for the high risk play. Like, uh, League of Legends is also just about um, trying to find what's the, like the best optimal risks for you, right? This is guaranteed. Do you recommend buying the courses over the Patreon? Yes. If you're very serious about climbing, I would recommend the courses to, to literally anybody. Any ELO, any champion you play. <clears throat> and if you're um, interested to see how they're laid out, both courses have like a preview video, so you can see how they're, how they're like, um, like the, their style, you know? So you can um, click on that and you can watch free videos before you get the course. And um, you can also check reviews in Discord, because of course it's my word. Of course, I'm gonna say my own product is good, but and some people that can back me up as well. How long are the courses? Each of them have around four hours of full educational content. All right, I should recall, but in the same time, Sing there's an FTP plus plates are dropping soon, and on this wave, Singe will not be there yet, so I can hard push this wave and get an extra plate. And I need 2.4k gold for my mythic, and um, I think if I overstay here a little bit, my tempo is all right. I'm not really losing out on anything, and I can still get plates, which if I would have recalled, I would not be getting. Yes, uh, Dadre won. What I'm doing currently is I'm gonna be doing educational on rank 2 masters on literally every champion. So we start with Riven, and then I'll be doing Aatrox, Garen, uh, like, Jax, every champion, you know? I ult here just because I feel like this guy actually wants to ult in me. Now we get a turret as well, and um, yeah, now it's just G. Alright, well, yeah, I got literally everything. As in, I got the plates, I got the turret, I got the kill, I got the scuttle, I got all the waves, so now, now I'm just too strong. I, I got everything possible there. It's simply too good now. I read the caster. I'm scared people might come top. I'm gonna be level 13, whilst the player behind me is level 10. So now it's just kind of game over. Uh, I can play for this tier 2, I can play for this tier 2, that will be my next objectives. I assume enemy, jo or enemy team wants to utilize their tempo maybe towards this Herald that is coming up, but... Looks like my teammates are pushing out this bot wave already, so there's no use for me to move there. So instead I'll move top, I'll farm the camps, whilst this wave is bouncing back into me, and when it's back into me then I'm just gonna push top and look for a top tier 2. Let's get these camps. Who do you think is the best micro ribbon? Probably Wenshen. And uh, for EU it's definitely uh, built. And an A, it's probably Viper, right? 
<laughs> Tim, Timmy McTim, thank you for two months, brother. Thank you so much for your prime. I appreciate it, boss. You have a very distinct name. All right, Sage's so bolt. They're both one HP. Zet, I'm not sure where this guy's at. So I try to always Q delay whilst I'm hitting the turret because if enemy champion would walk up, I could do like Q on the turret and then instantly EQ again, right? So I'm like prepared for anything happen. So that's why I always Q delay when I'm hitting turrets and not actually fast spamming my Qs. Proxy this so the next wave can walk up too. There's still a tier 2 turret to play for here. So you see when I'm ahead like this, chat, I'm not looking for kills, I'm not looking to fight. I will legit let enemies come to me, right? I'm standing on his shadow, so he legit can't even shadow anywhere else. When you fight against a Shen or against a Zed in the side lane, like I said, I'm not even looking for kills; they're just coming to me. And now we're just gonna go recall and bolt and play for this 600 gold right here. Goodbye, my team. Uh, now that is a little bit harder to replicate. Obviously, that is all mechanics, but hey, we take those, and now we go death stance and. We buy this, and now we're gonna be tanking lit against literally everybody else. Everybody has one item. I'm three. Uh, one item, one item. Okay, two items in here. One item, one item. Not even one item. One, one, one. I three. Any GG's? Yeah. Um, anyways, what I was explaining... I don't even remember. I think what I wanted to explain is, when I'm this far ahead in the game, I don't need to look for kills anymore. I need to get all the possible gold that I can get on the map. And most of the gold on the map is in Herald. Tier 2 turrets and jungle camps and side waves, right? So that's what I'm playing for. And then I get so ridiculously far ahead that eventually I'm just literally unstoppable and then that happens. What champion will be the hardest you think? Champ like, I don't like tanks in solo queue. Because you're more reliant on your environment than anything else. So I really like dislike playing tanks. Because even if you get a lead on those champions, you don't really carry games easily. You kind of need a good environment. That's why I'm not the biggest fan of tanks myself. But there's some tanks that are fun to play. I think Jogath is really fun to play. I think Sejuani is really fun to play. I think Mundo is fun to play. Sign is fun to play. But champions like Orin, bro, nah. Oh shit, we get the running the matchup. Probably in Masters even more. So this can go, this can really go either way. But let's go. We finally get the running the matchup in higher MMR 2. We still play with full fundamentals and one, and arguably the worst matchup in the game. Like I've probably been this champion for the past five years. So let's go. Now, one thing that I'm already noticing is it's, 80 damage, no true damage, 80 damage, no true damage, 80 damage, no true damage. If you guys don't know how death stance work, if you take damage as a as a champion when you have death stance, you take 70% of the damage instantly and 30% of the damage you take over time and you can heal and shield that. But true damage negates that passive, but since they have zero true damage, it's already looking really good for me to look for... Uh, a death stance. So my build ID here is Gorge Rink and Cleaver death stance. And then I'll be absolutely unkillable later. Alright, so they only have Oriana's AP damage. The rest is full AD. So it's gonna be Gorge Rinker, Cleaver, Death Stance. Maybe like a Hex Rinker in between. Uh, do I need double tenacity? No, I don't. I think I just take Unflinching here, but I'm gonna go Alacrity here. Although it is Hacker and Brankton. Alright, we're in full mass MMR. Yes, we go Resolve into the Rankton matchup. Without Resolve, it's absolutely unplayable. Yo, I just wanted to say, I just got to Emerald after being gold for years because I found your videos, thanks. Alright, so, I'm gonna go long short refillable, or sorry, long short 3 potions, I guess, or anything. You can also go D-Blade, I still like long short, so it allows me to play a little bit more aggressive in the early game. How you want to approach this matchup is you want to try, and, okay, he's also playing Flash Ignite the way he should be. And I want to try and get his bone plating out. Now, this matchup is losing for me after, like, level 2, level 3, right? Especially when he has Fury. But level 1, I actually win this matchup. Because he can only auto-Q, and I can Q, auto-Q, auto-Q, auto. So, level 1, I win this matchup. I want to utilize my level 1 strength. If I don't, I'm gonna have a very hard matchup to play. Well, this is looking pretty solid. Rank to W start. Don't say anything. It happens, and that's just it. So Alright, chat, going back to fundamentals. Go back to fundamentals. First time chat is saying good F, yeah. Yeah, bro, thank you. Anyways, what we gotta do here, chat, is we are uh, gonna mentally be uh, resilient, and uh, we're gonna drag the means here, let them egg run to me. By making them egg run to me, they should all focus onto the same mean right here. 
and that might make it so Rankton loses 1 million worth of XP. But in the meantime, I still want to also try and match the priority because I don't want Rank to get full priority for free. Alright, loses one melee, that's already very massive for me. So with him losing one melee mean, I can look to try and mismatch the level up timers and look to punish him still. He has bone plating already, I'd be wary of that. Tried to get it, couldn't get it. He's W suck, I forgot about that. Now, I want to kind of wait with getting my level 2, but I couldn't. He's walking forward anyways. So this is what Rankton should not be doing. And the Rankton matchup is beaten. Why? Because they don't respect level up timers in MASTERS ELO! MASTERS ELO! Riven is level 2? Yeah! Well. Well. Anyways. That is why I say, know your level up timers, sync your cooldowns. My cooldowns weren't even properly synced and I still got the kill. In MASTERS, by the way. And if you guys are not able to do this in gold, you're plain lying. Or your fingers are disconnecting. If I can do this in Masters and Diamond 1 consistently, you should you should you guys should be able to do this in Masters. Now, kind of tricky purchase here, because I want to go for the gore shrinker. So I think what I do here is actually go this. No, I won't. I buy this. I guess. I wanna go for Gorgia Gala. I can't go double longs with that. It's too it's too awkward. There we want our lane. He has no potions. That's really one thing to recognize here as well. I have two potions. So if I trade equal HP to the ranked in here, I will greatly benefit. Why? Because I have potions and he does not. Uh, Hecarim could go to his vault side here still, or he could return to top side. I'm not entirely sure what this Hecarim is going to do. But assuming that Shaco is here, I think Hecarim will go bot side. Uh, I'll ping that this guy has no flash. And Shaco might look for a gank here. Like I said, this trade is fine for me. Why chat? Because I have potions and he does not have potions. So I like this trade. Also, he doesn't have E here. And the ranked matchup is gone. Done. Dusted. Fundamentals and a little bit of mechanics here and there. And game over. Now I'm gonna hard push this wave. I'm not gonna slow push and make a push into me because I wanna look for a reset again. Unfortunately, I will still again not get the gold for a pickaxe, but it's okay. It's okay. We can live without. Or I do a sinister idea here. And I actually got a proxy. I like my sinister plan here. Because this next wave will give me exactly 130 gold. And that will give me enough for my pickaxe. Now, Rarington has to walk through the turret anyways. And I just hope Hecarim isn't here. Rarington can't really stop me. He should go for the wave. If he doesn't, he's trolling. Alright, so Rarington has to go for the wave. And that allows me to get enough gold for my pickaxe. I don't need to cast it. I have my pickaxe now. Now we can recall. And now we get our pickaxe. Yeah, 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 I don't know, chat. What else do you want? A massive player still falling for the same traps that I showed you guys in gold, you know. I taught you guys the first game on this account to utilize your level 2 towers as driven. And I just killed a massive Reddington doing the same thing. He has no ignite, I have ignite, we're getting flesh at the same time. I'm gonna be level 6, he will not be. I can look to solo kill him here again because I'm gonna have ignite advantage and level 6 advantage. So, let's try and set that up. Yes, this is ranked! What do you guys mean? Yes, this is ranked! Of course it is. Alright, just at level 5. I'm halfway to 6, so let's prep the 6 here and kill this guy. First of all, prep his bone plating. There we go, I still have mine. I'm gonna full Q delay here. And I'm gonna try and all in him on my Q3. I wanted to E forward, because he thinks they have no... Okay. I'll just hard push here and I can dive him. Now, I'm not sure where the Hecarim is at. That is my only fear. But he has no E right now. He has no Fury. He's no bitches. Yeah, we should be able to kill him here. Although, I'm still not sure where the Hecarim is at. That was mechanics. That was nothing short of mechanics. But I had the ult ignite advantage. So, yeah. We get that one. We get that one. Today we talk the most calculating, the most a good timer. Thank you, Stradley, for the three, three months. months. Thank you, boss. Appreciate it. I mean... Yeah, GG. And now we just build HP. And the reason you build HP at this point in the game is because if I'm already ahead, right? So right now, I am extremely far ahead to the Reddington. The most important thing, of course, is to not lose my shotgun anymore. If he kills me once, he pretty much gets two kills. If they get an assist, they almost get three kills on me. So my first and foremost goal is to never die again. So what I like to do in these kind of scenarios is build defensive. 
I have enough damage to kill Rennington, right? But if I build defensive, I will still have enough damage to kill Rennington, but he will never be able to kill me anymore. And that's why you build defensive when you're ahead. I can still kill him. He cannot kill me anymore. He says, how can play and goes AFK. I'm gonna hard push this wave. Could make a push towards me because, but he's gonna be level six and he's gonna have ignite. So I don't want to, I just wanna get priority and maybe we can look for, oh, we can't look for Halja. It's only seven minutes of the game. I thought we were a little bit later. It's all good though. I can maybe look to invade the Hecarim. Let's see where he goes after the mid wave. He might get level six though. I'm gonna proxy here. This turret is taking damage. I don't necessarily need to kill the Hecarim right here. I'm gonna proxy. See if we can kill. Okay, Hecarim did get level six. I'll work right here. Okay, he's done these camps. Harold's coming up soon. Maybe I can hit this plate once or twice. We get a plate. Gonna make Hecarim or the rank to choose here. Hit it once. Alright, this guy already killed the Hecarim. If he has to E for it, it's not a good trade for him anymore. He thinks he can kill me, but like I said, I've been building defensive a little bit. So he simply doesn't have enough damage to kill me. I still have enough damage to kill him. Now I'm gonna have full Gordrak as well. All I need to do right here is get one plate. I'll have my full Gord Drinker. We reset and, I mean, game is pretty much over. I killed him there without ult and ignite. And he had both. So, from this point onwards, if ha also if Rankin falls bad in the early game, right? You just become such a useless champion. I will always stay checking for the rest of the game. So yeah, I mean this matchup, even though it's one of the hardest matchups in the early, in in the in the game, like arguably this is one of the hardest matchups to play in top lane, I think. Like ranked and just counters Riven in, in every regard, besides level one, level two. Well, I won my matchup level one, level two. Even if he buys Borg, do you still win? Yes. I'll always be too far ahead for him to do ever do anything. So next item is going to be Cleaver, and then after Cleaver I go Death Stance, and then it's pretty much GG. Now I could go CDR boots this game, and the reason I go CDR boots over Tabis is because if I go CDR boots, especially where I don't have um, Transcendence here too, I will at least have 40 ability haste, and with 40 ability haste, I can somewhat kill late. If I go Tabis here, I will only have 50 ability haste once I have Cleaver, so now I need a full Cleaver to get my 50 ability haste, so I think CDR boots is completely fine here. I'm gonna full kill late, and I can pretty much 100 zero this guy. Taking any trade here is good. I've all the guys. I'm gonna be level nine, and uh, we just dive this guy. I can face tank him whilst diving him. By the way, I just like I said, I can face tank it because I'm simply too strong. And I even have Gore Drinker. So at this point in the game, like look, his items right. He only has 15 extra AD with this. It's just absolutely unplayable for him. And now we take over, and now it's a GG. My team is doing well too. Good shit. <clears throat> Hacker, I'm good on top side. I'm gonna slow push this a little bit because by me not killing the turret, I allow this wave to walk up a little bit closer and then I can farm comfortably. Plus, I deny the cannon. I'm stingy like that. Now we get this. This wave is in my range now to farm very comfortably and we reset again. I mean, do I need to say more? It's GG. Pi could move, I guess, so I'm gonna recall here safely. Um, I have a lot of options here. I could rush into the cleaver here. I think it's fine. So, um, my team is stomping the rest of the map as well, so I don't need to really expand my lead. I can just play chill here. Everything is winning. Bot is winning. Mid is winning. Jungle is winning. So, the game is absolutely over. Choose your own path. Okay, dokie. <gasps> okay. Alacrity. Bless. Bless Alacrity. I'm ar I'm I think I'm legit gonna get two items before this guy gets his first item. Poor fellow. Oriana could come here, I guess, so. Not sure. What is the best mid in your opinion? If I was a mid lane and I wanted to one trick a champion, I'd probably go for Cassiopeia, because I feel like that champion is like biggest 1v9 potential out of all the mid laners, like full 1v9. In most scenarios, you win sideline every time, and you have very strong lane, and like you have strong level one, strong level two, and you can always side lane. So that's why I would go for champion like Cassiopeia if I was a mid lane man. I probably want for Cassiopeia. This guy is nothing. Oh, I have flesh. 
it literally tickles me, by the way. Oh, Sorry, Kongo, both in GG. Ever play Kill? I haven't played it much, but I will be playing Kill on Ranked to Masters. I feel like, a, you know, like a Chinese Riven, where I take, uh, I leave Ranked in open, I solo kill him level 2, I take tier 2 at minute 12, and uh, yeah, game is pretty much uh, Jover. I have two items before this guy's close to 1, plus tier 2 boots. Top in the season, who to OTP? I think Renekton is uh, really good to OTP right now, Garen is really good. Uh, to any player that wants to like climb right now, I recommend uh, Renekton. I also have a video on my YouTube about Renekton. Camille is also pretty good. Camille, Garen, uh, Renekton. I mean, Riven is one of the best 1v9 champions in top lane, so that's why I'm a Riven main. Right, I like to 1v9, I like to win side lane, I like to be taking the game into my own control. So that's why I play these champions at the at like best for 1v9. Alright, I mean, this game is uh, this game is uh, pretty much in the pocket, as long as we don't int, and uh, then we're fine. Let's see, I can kill lay on this Orianna and kill her. So if you want to set up kills with Riven, what you want to do is you kill lay, and then you kill lay again. And then, I can pretty much do nothing because she looks really like a little bitch. Top 3 1v9 champions in top lane. I would say... Jax. Trindamere and Riven. Fiora is up there as well. Jax, Fiora, Trindamere and Riven. Because ja they can kind of do everything. The thing with Trindamere, Jax, and Riven is they can all play side lane. They're all good in lane, and they can also team fight as well. Fiora's a bit more time team fighting. I think Camille is harder. Camille is a lot harder because you have quite a bad laning phase. Yon is pretty good as well, yeah. Okay, Fuku lay. If Oriana goes bot, we just one shot her. I will showcase you guys what I mean with Fuku. Okay, well, they leave it every time, mate. Leave it every time, mate. I'm just playing for the tier to turret. Then eventually they'll come to me. I don't necessarily need to play for kills. They'll come to me. If they don't, they should get tier 2 turrets like that. Okay, bro found this item. Let's go, boss. Oh, goodbye, I cut him. Full kill lay. That was a banger. Bro thought he would do damage. Oh, red, white, affiliates. Don't want to be too fast. Alright, chat! That's it! That's it! Another Malphite matchup, let's go. So here we see something different. It's Malphite and Briar. Briar is mostly a physical damage, whilst Malphite is a mix. So here I can kind of go for both AD, health, and armor, but I think I should just go health here because it's kind of a combination. Are you going to play Shen anytime soon? I will also do Shen on rank 2 Masters, but I'm not sure when it's on the list. Okay, what the hell? What in full Masters MMR? Okay, let's full focus on the game. This Ash has no potion, so she might want to hit like a plate and get like. Refillable. She's looking for stuff, so I'm gonna go here. Because this guy's gonna play like a psychopath by the looks of it. No, that guy's just dead. What? Well, looks like it worked. They're literally playing away from me as well. Like, they're running away from me, you know? Well, well, well. Well, well, well. This Malphite actually has the Comet inspiration setup, so it's not that aggressive. And also, Briar is starting Raptors. Whenever enemy... Oh, and he has... This shoot start with Comet. Whenever enemy jungle starts Raptor chat, be very wary. Because what enemy jungler can do now is do Raptors and Rep buff and then Golems. But what do you think they're gonna do after Golems? They could gank me in top lane, right? Oh, Shake was invading. Okay, this is gonna be a banger early game. Right, so I'm trying to pay attention to both junglers here, what they're doing. But it's very important that I do a second wave crash here. And why second wave crash? Because then I'm not gank- Oh, actually Briar skipped. Briar is right here. Level 2 here, against a master top laner, still works. There we go. Beautiful trade here, why? Level up timers. GG. Still got half his HP right there. Are you not convinced yet about this level up timer trick chat? Get priority in the matches where you can. This Briar just got... <laughs> got uh, scammed, I would say. If this guy goes Q, I'm fine with him using Q onto me, because it legit drains his mana so fast. Okay, it's W E. Okay. Two minions for level 3. Two melees here and I get my level 3. Oh, I thought I'd be walking out of the E there. He needs one more minion for level 3 as well. I'm gonna trade some auto attacks. Beautiful. That's okay. Loses him so much mana and he didn't have bomb or mana flow anyway, so I don't mind this. I wanna probably... Both drones are going with the bolt side right now, right? But I only scams in both sides, so what I wanna do here is start hard pushing. I'm gonna... Crash wave 4 right here. 
And then proxy wave number 5 and then either Rico or look for Scuttle because both jungles are bot side. So the faster I hard push here, the faster I can start proxying as well. And now Mobile is stuck on the turret. Whilst he's stuck on the turret, when your level 4 is driven, you can hard push the backline means if you land all your Qs and your W. So here, when I do these kind of matchups, I go here, right? And I Q this, AoE, and then my W almost kills everything. The casters die. The metas are a bit trickier. And now I can just recall for free. Mofet is still going to be collecting this wave. And you see, this is the next wave I'm supposed to play on. And I'm pretty much back in time with that wave. Uh, you can go for double long shot here, but I'm going to go for just the call feuds. Gives me a little bit of ability haste. I'm fine with this. So here, I lose absolutely nothing. Now, Mofet can choose. He can recall and walk back. I can recall and TP back. But ultimately, I'm losing zero means and zero EXP for this proxy, right? And you have to do it efficient like me. It requires some practice, but now I'm back in lane. Okay, Moffat is pulling the wave. He's making a push towards him again. That's okay, right? I'll, again, I lose nothing. Okay, maybe I lose this one million because he pulled it. So that's well done by the mob fight. And it's pushing towards him, but I'm still completely fine. Uh, Briar is 12 CS. She's probably still going bot side. My shake is going AP. Okay, good to know. Moffat might want to queue for the cannon. Beautiful! Okay, okay, solo kill, the, the, the master of Molokipede. How did I do it? Early game wave plans, and then I get the item on the bounce, he walks up for the cannon, we get our kill, we get his flash, we get his TP, he gets triple cloth armor. That's what we call crunch, but it's okay, we don't need to kill him anymore. We're in a position right now where we don't necessarily need to kill this guy to still get strong in the game. Alright, I can't get pickaxe, so... It's just uh, forced to buy this, I suppose. I, this is like the most awkward kind of purchases to have on Raven because you really want that 900 purchase on pickaxe. But it's okay, I couldn't get it this game. Not much I can do about it. So we should be hitting level 6 on the same timer here because I got the solo kill. But one thing I have to keep in mind here is that I don't know. Okay, he's maxing Q at 126 damage. Uh, plant spawns in the river at 6 minutes. Okay, he's already level 6, right? So I gotta be a little careful here because if Briar even ganks me here with the Malphite ult, I'm just always dead. Also, with Malfa getting prio, it's not really that worth to me to look to trade that much, because if he pushes in this wave, he's going to be the first to walk towards the river and get the plant, right? So, I always gotta keep that in mind. The plant spawns around 610, so here it, it doesn't make too much sense for me to look for trades, literally at all. And I'm still doing it. This is what you call idiot gameplay. And I didn't have my E. If Malfa is smart, he pushes in this wave, goes for the plant, and I'm kinda stuck in lane. He's not the smartest. This guy is running out of mana too, by the way. He has no mana for ult. If he goes for plant now, it doesn't matter. You know why? Like, he's going for it now, but that will give me enough time to just hard push this wave and recall. If he did it earlier, instead of sitting under my turret, I would be in a hard position, but now I actually don't care. Because now I just hard push the wave. Sure, he gets the plant now, but it's like... Who cares? And who asked? So now I just get my free recall anyways. But I can't buy shit. Or like uh, thrift shopping. I guess we buy Ruby Crystal and we go for Cleaver now. And they have a 5 kills Ash. If you can't buy pickaxe in any of your early game recalls, you're probably forced to just go Cleaver. Because else it's just too hard to get to your first item. Yes, but he didn't have enough mana to all in me there, clone Carty. And now I get a freeze. So what I'll do here to hold this freeze is I'm gonna ward the second bush, see how the Malphite responds. And now he's staying in lane, which is fine. But you see, he needs 100 mana for his ult. So I want to try and get him down to lower mana. Use your E. Nice. Gonna use Q as well. Nice. I have 12 Conqueror stacks and he doesn't have mana for ult. What do you think of that chat? What do we think of that? Now of course the ad added knowledge that you guys need here is that Malphite's ult costs 100 mana. That is something that I know that not ever, that probably not everybody knows, right? But here, this is my second kill on Malphite. Still only by manipulating my reset purchases, uh, by, by reset timers, right? And then also canceling the Malphite reset timer here by holding a freeze. So twice this Malphite has died, not necessarily because I mechanically outplayed him, but because I'm playing better with my reset timers, my tempo, and my wave manipulation. That led to the kills. Right? Type one in chat if you learn something new to the thing face. Yeah. 
Okay, that's a lot of ones, I'm happy. Good shit chat. And uh, yeah, we end up rushing Cleaver simply because we're gonna get pickaxe. I could still pivot and go for this, but I think just finishing Cleaver here is completely fine and we're in a good position. Alrighty, so we just go Cleaver here this game now. I don't like to rush this item. There's two reasons why I don't like to rush this item. One thing, no sustain. Second thing, no wave clear from like my item, right? Moffat is missing. Where's this guy? He should have been back already. <gasps> he did blue buff and he's bot? What the hell? Okay, he doesn't have TP. That's just really, really random. He should be back already. Um, okay, that's okay though. Moffat going both. Their Bolton is their win condition. I don't know if he's trying to push them more or just tired of laning against me and my fundamentals, but ultimately, I like this scenario. But you see, my wave is very limited here because of Cleaver. If I had Hydra, this wave would have already been in. Moffat is still bot. This is like a bad thing because the thing is, my bot lane loses 2v2 anyways. So, but Moffat being there, it doesn't really change anything. But I can you get a massive amount of resources here. So, I'm never going to try and match this. I'm just, okay, Moffat flash it and ult it probably. And yeah, I'm getting two plates. So, I don't mind this too much. I'm just playing for my own resources. Holy moly. <laughs> Young Lion, thank you for the 10 again, bro. Or every time Young Lion enters, like, it just hops in the stream. like, here, have 10. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it, boss. You're the GOAT. The absolute GOAT. Okay, let's keep focus up here. So, their Ash is really strong. Their Ash is pretty strong. Um, my Matron are playing fine, though. They're just even in the game. Uh, after this Cleaver, we're gonna go Hydra for sure. I'm probably building Tiamat at first, just so I get the wave player that I already want. And because ultimately, I'm not really looking to kill this mob fight anymore. I'm just mainly looking to expand my lead through camps, waves, stuff like this. They could look to gank me here, but Moffat doesn't have flash ult, so... I think I can just get the full turret here, and that's a good thing for me. That would just greatly put me out in terms of gold. Yo, Moas! It's me. Yo, Bo Boxel Tau, welcome. Okay. My mid got solo bowled. That's unfortunate. Alright, chat. It's Tiamat plus CDR boots angle. And I have two options. I could... If anybody flames my wall, I'm perma banning you. G I G A M A L P H. Uh oh. Really? Happy, happy zero two. Thank you for six months, and this was grief. Now, the reason why I'll end here is two reasons. First of all, I knew that Malfi doesn't have flesh and ult there, so I can chase him and kill him. Um, but I think she just flashed. Um, yeah, I didn't take to account of the Briar that quickly, and um, the Ash ult, of course. Now, the thing that sucks the most is that uh, this kill, of course, puts me down very far. Because if I didn't die, I wouldn't lose this Cannon Wave. I could have farmed these two Jungle Camps and maybe this camp as well. So the death here, I give a shutdown, first of all, but I also lose a Cannon Wave. I also lose a Plate, and I also lose the potential of having been able to farm this Jungle Camp. So in total, I lose around 1.2k gold here. So this death was very bad. Let's refrain from deaths like this, and let's play very, very disciplined for her and out. Because I can still carry the game, but remember, like I always say... Especially on a champion like Riven, low deaths win games, okay? I need resources. I think that again, it's okay. I can still carry this game. We just gotta play really disciplined, okay? This wave is pushing towards my mid laner, and LeBlanc wants plates. So, I, all I'm gonna try and do right now at this point in the game is how can I get maximum gold income for myself? That's all I want. So this wave is pushing into me. Malzar probably wants to recall here, and he's in towards both side, right? So, we're gonna look for Scuttle and them for two mid waves and maybe even a plate. Right? So, Mob is mid. My entire team died. I don't mind it too much. I'm gonna try and get maximum gold income for myself. That's all I need to do to try and carry this game. Briar is a big shutdown now. So wrap ups respawning. I can get a plate here too. Right, so I push a top wave. I got scuttle. I got two mid waves and I'm getting two plates here. So that's a massive amount of gold. LeBlanc is coming back, so after this plate I'm dipping. Briar could come back with extra items too. And now we just need to farm for Hydra. I think we need 750 more. Yeah, there we go. 750, we got Hydra, then we can start looking to really expand this lead. They're gonna play for Herald in one minute. 
So I might just want to be bot lane by that time. So that whilst they play for Herald, I'm just bot lane looking to get myself more fed. I don't want to 5v5. I obviously lose 5v5 against a team fight right now. So I think here I just want to hard push this wave and go bot already. And the reason I want to be bot is because enemy team in theory should play for Herald. Okay, Ezreal goes bot here, yeah, but Ash is top, right? So I can 1v1 fight against Ezreal, and I can even look to kill him on side lane. I'm gonna ping her to go mid. <clears throat> ah, this guy is muted. Okay, so Ash ult is one thing I need to be wary of. For 400 gold, we got our Hydra. This Ash is full H or this turret is full HP. Ash LeBlanc mid. Ash will recall, okay. Malphite could be running into bot, right? Not sure. Malphite could also be around Herald. Wait, nobody in enemy team is around Herald. Okay, Malphite is here. Very weird game right now. Their mid turret is really low. I need one more weapon and I have my Hydra. I'm thinking here, what if I proxy? But I don't see Briar here, right? So if Briar was on this Herald, I would have proxied. But right now, this, cause, just because I'm not seeing Briar, I'm not... Yeah, I don't feel safe enough to proxy. I'm still very sad about my one death, because it put me behind so far. Okay, there's the Briar. She got Magicus and Tabis. Like, I'm a level up, by the way. Alright, he made a really big blunder by even fighting me. Those are the best ways for me to try and get back in this game. Briar is probably not looking for me. If she is, it's okay. It's a good death because I get this whole wave. I think I can just recall here. If I die, I die. It is what it is. Whilst walking back to lane now, I can go... T yeah. Okay, it is what it is. Uh, next item. So, 80 damage. 80 damage, but it's going pretty tanky. Tanky. Right, so tank and tank. So I think here my best item is going to be Eclipse. And I can explain this as well. If I go Gore Drinker, I only get HP, Ability Haste. I don't get any, any armor penetration. Uh, Dust Blade is very good for extra Ability Haste and Movement Speed. As you see the Mythic Passive. But because they have a full tank champion here, and this guy's really tanky too, I go for Eclipse, because if you read here, it gives me armor penetration at move speed. So this is arguably the best. Uh, yeah, I did end up dying. It sucks, but I couldn't really go anywhere else. Um, he gets a turret here, it's okay. I really wanted to get this rep off. This would be insane. Okay, nice. They trade one for one. But Mozart's dead in the river. Okay. Whilst this wave is pushing towards me, that gives me the opportunity to look to get this quickly. We can carry this game, but we gotta play really, really smart with resources, chat. That's like the only way I can carry this game, pretty much. We really gotta get all the resources we can on the map. Right, I'm level 12, but there's other players in the game that are level 12 as well. Alright, this wave is walking. This wave is going to meet as well, but whilst it's doing that, I can farm this camp as well. So we just got a rep off, and we just got a croc camp for free. They only have one dragon, but they're probably gonna play for next dragon. Uh, I am both sides, which kind of sucks. Um, maybe I should have been top, but I don't think I could have been top. Alright, so I push this out. I think Ash is no flash. But I can't hit bot lane here, because they could gank me. Uh, I could look for a 5v5, but ultimately we don't win that. So maybe we can play for this and this. And we say, skip drag. Try turrets. Oh. That's pretty big. That shoots your Kuro's mid-tier one as well. I mean, that is just really good luck. And, okay, we got the Herald too. But I want to try and use this tempo to go top lane as well. And if enemy team plays for dragon, I can utilize that tempo to get this and maybe get this. And this is 600 gold. So I'm going to ping my team to not fight for this because I don't think, I still don't think we win. Right? Two items, two have items, two items. Like, I don't think my team should be fighting. So I'm going to ping them away. Hopefully they listen. And I'm going to utilize the tempo that we have right now. Like, two, they're too strong, you know? We can't 5v5, we don't have Miles world. So it's better for me to look to cross map here to gain maximum resources. Look my CS now, right? Also, if I get this tier 2 turret, that's 600 more gold. The Blanc could come. The Blanc can still come here. I 
It's okay. Sadly, Malphite was top. Well played by him. He has good macro too, right? It's very good for him to be top. But I'm gonna recon go bot lane now. I'm gonna play for this. Nash is up in one and a half minutes, so now it's time for me to go bot lane again. Um, I'll get Dirk against three players that have zero armor. And let's see if we can play for this tier one now. Ultimately, I only have three kills, but I'm the closest to three items of anybody in the game, even though this guy is, well, this guy has 11 kills. Uh, this guy has 8 kills, right? But I'm still maybe even ahead of them in gold. What conflict awaits. I'm not really getting a lot of kill opportunities. He took my wave already. If Ezra walks up here, I'm kind of scared that there could be other players potentially nearby. I think the scuttle is gone, but... Okay, Briar recalling would be amazing. I'm gonna try and verify that. Okay, so she has recalled. Their next objective, their next neutral should be Nasher. Okay, LeBlanc there. That's right there. I'm gonna try and probably get this under Malphite's nose. Oh, Malphite is top. Okay, we've seen everybody on the map. Nobody's here. Only Briar could be here from base. Nobody else is here. You guys know who a good coach is? Alois. That guy is good. Good. 1300 for Mythic, by the way. I don't have Sweeper. No, oh, okay, we gotta dip. Vanitas, thank you for the Prime, bro. 300 gold for our Mythic. This guy's playing aggressive, so there's probably still people looking for me here. I just always try and utilize my tempo in a way where I can get resources for myself. So now we push this out first wave. I'm gonna instantly go for Golems. My team does have really fast Baron with these three. So we have really fast Baron if they look to make a play on me. The one, one against the bug for me is very easy because look at their items, right? She's also building magic resist, but I have full damage. I'm 100 gold off, so I'm gonna... Malphite here. I want to lane against LeBlanc. I can 100 to 0 here if I kill Lay. So let's see here. Two options. I think I want to hard push this just to create pressure for my team. They can't really 4v4, but if I get pressure from both sides, enemy team has to always be careful of me, right? I could recall for my mythic right now. Malzar is looking to flank as well. You like that, chat? Holy shit, that guy's boosted, is he? That guy's monster boost, by the way. I mean, I predicted the LeBlanc W, but my Le my mods are a stroke mid-game. Happens. We recall. <laughs> shit, bro. I mean, they could play for Nash. I don't have ult for 30. I can't really stop it. They play Nash. My Shaco's trying to weave in as much damage as he can, so that's good. Oh, no. Wait, everybody died. Of course, there's a ward here. I don't know how to play. I, I, I can't really do much when my team is permanently dead, you know. I can't stop them, I didn't have ult. I just have it. Maybe I shouldn't have went for the Ezreal and stayed around the Nash. Maybe I misplayed, but hard to say in hindsight. I also use my flesh on a one kill Ezreal. It's very tricky for me to get anything here. Dragon is in 130, but the side wave here is pushing away from me, so it's not too appealing for me to go here. I don't know who left the side wave like this, but he's kind of a piggy. This is my side wave. <clears throat> it's still my one death that really turned around this game. Can still try and win though. I think we should skip this dragon again. Yeah, but to be fair, I'm also three items in and continuously cross mapping is not really gonna carry this game anymore. I should look for a pick or something. Like if I can one shot this guy, we can play for dragon. You're kidding me by the way. Well that's just pure plain unlucky. I think she flashed as well. And I used my ult again. A of nice outplay. Yeah. Are we dying? You're kidding me with that shit. What the hell is that healing boss? What? 
the hell is a champion? I can't even do it like something. Oh, if I get that one K, I can carry this game. Ah, sorry to play, bros. Sorry to play. Again, I didn't have team fight or my ult in a team fight though. I don't want this guy to take my shit. Uh, I mean, we got S flesh and Malphite flesh. But yeah, this Malphite is always going to ult me, so it's very tricky to play. Uh, I, I, I'm i trying to pick up this LeBlanc, right? If I got to pick up the LeBlanc, it would be such a free team fight, but. Uh, she, ah, she got just out of my range. It's so sad. Like, her W just went out of my ult range. If that LeBlanc dies, the game looks different. This Briar almost is full build. Very nice. Malphite has no ult and no flash. Push it to the limits there. Is he dead? No, he ain't dead. Shit. Would have been amazing if he died. I can get Guardian Angel from this at least. Who got the 1k shutdown? Zerdy did. Okay. I forgot about the Briar. I was just 3v1ing there. One shot the Ash. Tank the Ash and kill the Malphite too. Please hold it. Please don't all be dying though. We 1350. We have 1450. We got Guardian Angel. But next wave is a cannon wave. I just need to make sure I don't miss this cannon and we're chilling. Okay, I don't have enough tempo to get this turret. I do have four items now. See, I only have five kills, but I'm still the first player in this game to get to four items. Oh, the Ash can ult me here. It's probably gonna be an Ash ult here. So I'm still the first player to hit the four items here, even though I have four kills, right? This guy doesn't have four yet, this guy doesn't have four yet. So that's just because I've been farming very consistently and, and playing for my neutral objectives. <clears throat> I have flesh now too. Pretty sure S will flesh this. Let's fight. My Zeri and Malzar do skill, so that is one very big benefit. Now, next objective is the Mal uh, the Nasher, right? So I think the most important thing for me to do here, or next objective is, is Nasher. My team should not die. I want to push out both waves, so the side wave opposite to the neutral objective is at least pushing towards my opponent. So then we have tempo in one way or another. I don't have TP, so I need my teammates to back off and not die. Because Malphat can TP and I cannot. And I, th th like, it's 55 for Nash, so I even get a tempo timer here to look for this turret, if Malphite isn't here. If Malphite is here, my biggest goal is to try and just chunk him. If I chunk him, the next fight should already just be a little bit easier. Right, the more HP he loses, the easier next fight should be, in theory. He might have to recall too. Okay, this is really, really good. They're all- oh, this shit. Can this bitch die? Okay, mechanics. Okay, too far, too far, too far. Ult, ult, ult! Okay! Surely we get Nash and stuff, right? Team, do Nash! How are we dead? Please do Nash! Can't do more! Malphite or Malza gets a tier 2. Come! Come, you pigs! What the fuck are we? Why are we not doing Nash? Nah, if Briar steals it now, I'm going AFK, by the way. Yeah, now we guess oh, now I guess we can do it. Choose your own path. 
Legit, legit, this Zeri is playing full muted. That's what happens when an AD carry full mutes. It's okay, I guess we don't want Nash, we just gotta stop the soul now. That's a few mu full muted AD carry, by the way. Any clappers for Zeri? Any clappers for that ADC carry brain? That's what happens when, you, when ADC brain thinks for herself. Very nice. Very nice that I can't spam ping them anymore either. Good job, Riot Games. Okay. Okay, they died, so look at this. Okay, now we're actually in control. They don't get soul. Now let's get Nash as well, because Briar is dead. I'm full build already, so I don't even need more gold, but I can always sell items, right? Because my Guardian Angel is uh, on cooldown right now, so I can always sell it. So I can play for this tier 2 turret. Gives me 600 gold again, which is very nice. I gotta be careful for Ezreal ult, and, uh, and, and Ezreal ult, I guess. I don't have Guardian Angels, so we can't really dive in for free. Okay, that's the Ezreal ult. Okay, we don't go. It's all good. We got Ashes Flash. Um, I mean, I'm gonna push out the stop wave. What should I get for item though? Some Garden Angel. Is it just Raljas? Maybe Maul? I don't have any magic assist, right? I just get Maul? Or just keep? I think I might be just keep it. Going for keepsies here. I'm getting tempo towards this. The, the Baron buff is off on this wave, so they don't know that I'm actually here. Because these mains aren't Baron buffs. I'm hogging the bot side of this bush, so LeBlanc doesn't know that, that I'm actually here. That doesn't look like LeBlanc is coming though. I see him off right there, so... Let's get this turret now. It's plus 600 gold. Two and a half minutes for... Garden Angels. Still very far away. We got mid as well. Ma okay, this guy's three items. We got anti heal anti heal Prior is here. What's Shaco doing? There it is. I don't think I can help the bro. We're dying here too. Assuming Malphite ulted. Oh shit. Wholesome river moment. Hey, that was a Penta, by the way. He doesn't take that shit from me. Can this guy stop healing too, please? Alright, the most wholesome river moment in the game. That's what happens when river gets full built. And uh, that's how you can still move in on your games. Yeah, this game was absolutely unwinnable, but somehow we did it. Yeah, sir! Yeah, sir! Alrighties. Alrighties. Unstoppable. Uh, I think. Whew. That's a thing you can only do on Riven, though. Yeah, Riven definitely is one of the better cha uh, champions at trying to still carry games like this. It would be harder for a champion like Aatrox to, to, to replicate this. At the most wholesome Riven moment, who wins? As we're going in melee. Oh no. Wait. I mean, they both did go into melee range, though. Like, this Ezreal went into melee range, same as LeBlanc. Plus 69. Banger. How much gold were behind? Uh, Zeri wrote? Not a damn care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, I don't know, bro, that guy. Zeri uh, kind of tried her best, if I'm brutally honest. No!